Welcome into the Cam and Strick Podcast, episode number 245. Presented I'm by a Hair real Club. American. I am hot. I am a real American. I'm sweating. It's hot in here, man. Oh. Oh, God. Eh. Uh, we've had some crazy Midwest storms for all oh, y'all out there. God, it's hot in here. I was trapped in a tornado in Indiana, first off. Yeah, you did. Like, very you got trapped. Rocked. I saw. You got rocked. And then uh, I was trapped. I was at a pool party the other day. There was like a, they, they had a, a pavilion, like, by their pool, kind of like a, you know, like a bar type thing, you know? Most people went inside. I stayed outside. Oh, I'm watching it, dude. And, I mean, that was just absolutely crazy. There's hardcore storms here in St. Louis. My doggies were losing their minds. The cat's fucking scared. Your dogs don't go out of the uh, cage. What? And I, I got an issue with that's that. A, that's a dumb thing to say, Andy. That, that, oh, I went, to, dog, I went to your house. They're in the cage Because the I had daytime. people over because, they, because they're going to jump on you, and I didn't want them out. I can handle that. No, you can't. I'm like a professional. They'll push you down. You're little, <laughs> and you have sandals on all the damn time. <laughs> but, uh, um, so listen, can I tell you about my... Uh, my traumatic experience. As long as it doesn't bore the audience. Well, you can talk about anything. Okay, just don't bore the okay, audience. Because PTSD is a legit thing. Yeah, and you don't have it. So don't even fuck with that. I know. I that's know. a stupid thing no, to say. No, that's two now. Okay. That's two. No, no, I'm we're not. not that's, that's two now. I didn't say I have it. You should have heard Andy what he was talking about earlier. And I'm not even going to bring it up. But now you're talking about PTSD. Don't be doing that, boy. Okay. We got some shit kickers listening. And they really got it. Did I say I had it? I don't know where you're going. But I think my kids may... may no, your kids ha- don't have well, No, it. I'm just saying... Your it was kids a- that live in Creve Corps, they go to the little Creve Corps racket club, they play... Uh, are you kidding me? Listen, it was a traumatic yeah. experience. Yeah, so, so, the the sirens... That we're, we're in Bloomington, Indiana, where my wife Lovely went place. to college. Oh, dude, it's... Indiana's awesome. No, no, no. Indianapolis is awesome. Bloomington, it was sick. We were in Beautiful. Indy. We were in Indy for a couple of days. And then uh, Bloomington, it's a great campus, dude. Great school, Big Ten school. Indianapolis is fucking awesome. Um, so she wanted to show, uh, show my kids where she went to college, you know, on the way home. So we stopped there. Spent I the saw. entire day there. Great, great restaurants, great bars. I, I saw it. You know, it's a, like, listen, man, I can live in a college town. I used to say back in the day, that's where I was going to retire. Fuck. I was going to live in a college you town. You want to live in a college town with a bunch of swinging dicks flying around all over the place when you're 40 years old? Are you crazy? That's the opposite of what I want to do. College Town, get the fuck away from me. I like to be away from that shit. Let me tell you something, though. <laughs> College, College Town. Town. College Towns always have cool things going on, though, man. They got smart thinkers. They're innovative. They're progressive. There's a lot of shit going on. There's <laughs> they mu- are progressive. There's sure. music everywhere. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of cool shit. You've never been to one. Music? Yeah, I know, Andy. I don't want that. I don't want people. There's artists. I don't care if there's artists. I don't care. There's restaurants out by me. There's a, I don't, everything I need is a, I have out There's there. There's really nothing. The out last, by you. let's be honest. Besides a beautiful golf course, okay. that we, well, we, that's about it. And we have restaurants. It's very desolate. Yeah, it's far enough away to where you're you're away, and close enough to where I can come in here and beat you every time when we have a nine o'clock meeting. <laughs> I still beat you here, so it's not Kinda, that far. Not really. But like you're like I went college. You want to go? You want kids everywhere when you walk outside? It's not like no that. way. You think it's just college kids that there's live a ton? in a college town? No, no, it's not. No, but there's a ton of college there, kids, and that's exactly what I wouldn't want. There's professors. There's a lot of different people. They're fun. Those, yeah, well, be... I'm just saying. There's a lot of professionals. Oh, the professors are there now. I'm you know, move like down. where I went to college was the headquarters for uh, Gore-Tex, dude. There's like a whole corporate. corporate I get all that. You know, there's a lot of like different shit. People. So what who, does that mean, though? People who are uh, anthropologists. Who are uh, who, who study uh, you know different landscapes and study the land and yeah, and study plants and uh, who are athletes? I mean, actually, where I went to college is like one of the the biggest uh, training grounds for um, high altitude training for Olympic athletes all over the world. Because they want to train in uh, in high altitude cam, you know. Yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, yeah, yeah. You get yeah, it? You yeah, understand? Yeah. Like swimmers, cross country runners, track stars, all that. Cool. Anyway, so we're we're driving around, and all of a sudden the uh, the tornado sirens start going off. I mean, loud. Now those things don't just go off, you know, unless it's like the first Monday of the month, whatever. No, no, it's a, no. So like, no, you know, know. And, and my wife's like, oh, I want to get out here and like take a picture of like the house I, I lived in, like my sophomore year of college. That must have been so fun. And I'm like, dude, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. I'm like, there's a tornado coming. Look at that bush. It's so still there. Now my tie's starting to freak out. Yeah. In the back seat. Yeah. Like going crazy. He gets himself all worked up, man. He had never been scared of uh, tornadoes ever. 
And the, the sirens are coming. Now it's starting to get black out. It's starting to get windy. And um, and right when the, tr- the, 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 the hail, like, saw, like, like tennis ball size hail, just pounding on my car, dude. Did you break your windshield? Uh, I got a couple spots. Because if it was tennis ball size hail, your windshield would have been done no. so, dude. It's amazing. Wow, you must have a Hummer or something, like a <laughs> no, tank. You no. got a tank? Well, I got an XC90. A tank? Racing series. Yeah, that, there was No, no, no. So, a- anyway, so, so, so t- he gets so worked up, he throws up all over the car. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, I'm it's like, like, oh, my like God. He, he's throwing up. Throws up all over Ivy's favorite oh, stuffed no. animal. So, now That's she's brutal. screaming. I'm like, oh, my God. While the tennis ball hail is coming down, we pull over into, like, a parking lot. Can't get out. Can't do anything about it. And uh, eventually it, it, it passed. But somebody died in the tornado, and we were right in that very spot, like maybe 40, just missed 45 minutes right before that, dude. See, Andy, you never want to, like, go underneath a overpass or anything like that. My you, wife's like, find a parking garage. I'm like, oh, no. Dude, that, no, 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 no. <laughs> there aren't any, no, number you, one. You, you, you're better off. You, you could hide from the wind. But if, if, if you do go under an overpass or a parking garage, that wind it will collapse. funnel it so much more into you because mm-hmm. it's it, that's why you're, you should Or go, go under like a bank, you know, no, that, ATM it, thing. It, it amplifies the wind speed. Well, that's why you're not, you should not. Because the first thing you think of whenever you, when you think of hail and, mm-hmm. and tornadoes, like, I got I to gotta get, I got to get under something. Well, that's not necessarily the smartest thing to do. Because the wind amplifies, man, and you'll get fucking rocked if you go under. And I wasn't gonna have everyone run into like a restaurant or something. Dude, it was crazy. You could do that. You could have. That's exactly what you do. You Uh, find like a Jiffy Lube, and you go there because you can go underneath. You know, (laughs) seriously, the Jiffy or like a like a anywhere with a basement. You say you go to the Jiffy Lube when there's a tornado? Yes, because they have underground. Mm. Remember, they work on your car. Those guys that go underneath. That's where you go. I don't want to go under there. Yeah, but that's the safe zone. Yeah, that's a safe zone. So I think it's kind of safe to be in your car. Are you okay? PTSD? Are you okay? <laughs> no. Well, oh, you're going to get a couple comments about the, that. Well, no. Listen, I take PTSD no, very serious. He's, he's joking. I'm not dude. talking about, like, military. No, no, no. no. I know. Do, I'm just People who have been through real shit. Yeah, because we, we have a lot of that in our audience. So, so then the, the next day, we're at the other tornado, and, you know, Ty's like, what? He hears someone say tornado. He thinks, like, a tornado's going to... He throws up again. Jesus. You have to get that looked after, man. Like, what do I do about that? Put a bucket by him. Why yeah. is he getting so worked up? About I don't know. It? You, you think he saw something on YouTube or something? Maybe. Well, does he go on YouTube and oh, looks yeah. up shit? He does. Like anything? It's very smart. Yeah, but like he could look up all you kinds can look of crazy up things. He's too young to look up crazy. Well, things I don't right think now. he's doing that. Not gr- not porn. No. I'm talking no, like no, 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 no. people I know dying. What you're talking about people dying, like exploding, yeah, no, I don't like think just he's seeing crazy that. stuff. Do you like going rabbit holes down YouTube about God plane crashes to car accidents to? Crazy stuff, and you're like, ah, get away from that's me. That's how Twitter is. What happened oh, to Twitter, by God, the way? Twitter, dude. what did Elon do? I don't know. What do you do? People are like crushing Elon, like calling oh, he's him. Like, to fight. So, he's like, he's so dumb. Just like he does. I like. He is him. pretty smart, dude. No, I mean. no, I like Elon. Mm-hmm. But the whole Mark Zuckerberg Elon fight thing, I know it's going to charity. Are they still fighting? Just, like, no offense. Oh, they're going to fight like in a real fight? Yeah, like an MMA thing. And oh. Dana White, it's going to be the biggest fight ever in, in, in history because of these two guys. But it's like, you know what? Elon, save your brain cells. I don't want you getting punched. I don't want you getting knocked out. You're doing crazy, cool things, man. Like, you're an innovator. Like, don't get punched. People are not happy with him right now, just so you know. There's always people that bitch about him. They're Elon. very unhappy. Hey, did you know what happened with Twitter over the weekend? What, what, what happened? Like, it wouldn't let you, like, look at people's tweets or comments. Or I didn't every, see, everyone, I get away from Twitter on the weekends. Well, it was on the first day of free agency. So, a lot of, oh, a lot God, of eyes Andy, are on yeah. Twitter. Yeah, all right. So, you couldn't. You couldn't yeah. like read anything. You couldn't post anything. It was like it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know about them fighting thing. I, I just don't want it happening. It's just, it's just like don't. You got other things to do, mm-hmm. Mark. You I, too. I, I, Who listen, are you kidding, Cam? I, I, just slap. It's like I, you I, fighting Brody. Yeah, but, oh, Brody will fuck you up. Actually, Brody wrestled. Never mind. Hey, listen. I don't get caught up in. Uh, and all that, honestly. I know you don't, Andy. You don't get caught up in anything. No, I'm not watching Mark. Z- you think I'm I care about Mark Zutter- Zuckerberg fighting Elon? Like I don't. I don't. No really, interest. No, I know. I don't get caught yeah. up in that. Yeah, I I'm didn't even it's know stu- they I were it's doing stupid. it. It's yeah, stupid. It's stupid. Very stupid. So dumb. Mm. Save your brain cells, man. Find a way that uh, you know there's like a flying car or something, so we don't have to get stuck in traffic. Dude, I am so hot. This it's hot as fuck now. In here, I think man. it lost power. God, I put up a lot of American. A flags lot of in my people. I, listen, I put up a lot, and I love it so much. It's too I much. I love dude. it. Way too much. I love it. I even fixed a flag in my backyard. No, you that's didn't. what I do. No, my buddy did. 
You I, you can't even that hold, is funny. You can't even hold can't the hold drill. It. Dude. I am one dimensional. My buddy had to come over and dr- drill it in. Why would you drill it into the tree line? Because that's how that's how it was anyway. Oh, it was already there. Yeah. Oh, the flag was? The flag was there by the graveyard. Every oh. graveyard, those little graveyards that are mm-hmm. scattered around my property, like mm-hmm. uh, around St. Albans, there's always an American flag. There's a flag flying. Yeah. And that one got torn down with the uh, storms. Mm. So I fixed it. So I fixed it. I have been going very hard, dude. I, I got to be honest with you. I'm, I am, like, last night I thought I was getting, like, sick or something. I was coming down with it. I, I went straight from Indy. Get away from me. To Nashville. Jesus. Um, and then, like, right into free agency and uh, and um, prospect camp. It's just been a lot going on, you know. You prospect camp. I was going to go with you. I know, but you chose not to. You didn't go either. I went yesterday. Yeah, I'm not going yesterday. I was going to go Saturday. I like to watch the scrimmages. Listen, that's oh, long I mean. days. These scouts are working hard right now, man. They got to be there all day long. There's like multiple practices, and then they have a scrimmage and and whatever. So, but the draft, with the draft was fun, man. Was that cool? Nashville's a perfect place to have it. Everything's yeah. right there. People, you know. I kind of take Nashville for granted because I feel like, you know, been there so many times, yeah. you know, it's like such an easy trip to get to. But people who don't really go there on a regular basis, dude, they're like wild animals, man. You just let them well, out of the cage. You yeah, know? You're, there's always something to do, man. And there's girls everywhere. It's a party. Yeah, not, not this weekend. There weren't that many girls? It was like mm. hockey people. Yeah, a lot of swinging Everywhere. Dicks. Yep. Every staff, oh, fuck. it was just, you know. Imagine were, a bartender's got <laughs> 20 swinging dicks yeah. coming in that. I don't know if I counted five five girls really? in the entire That's city. Sucks. Well, last time we went there, man, there's girls just everywhere. I mean, everywhere. Like, there weren't any, like, bachelorette parties going on and stuff. Really? I didn't see any of it, no. And you it, was middle, your eyes, it was middle of the week, too. Yeah. Yeah, but usually middle of the week, that's when the bachelor parties happen, man. Really? Yeah. I feel like I feel like the, go down I feel like the, the weekend week. is when a lot of people have their... Uh, Dude, bachelor and bachelor. That place is a parties. party during the week. During the weekend, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? That was a crazy draft. I mean, no trades or anything in the first round, but it was always, NHL man. There's always shit going on. I feel like not like the NFL, but like there's a lot of trades that happen, signings, different people going different places. Yeah, but like the, the signings are like, what? there's no money. And guys are signing yeah, like one I, year deals. There's no money. I get you. I know there's no like money. They're not. Like, Fun signings. Like, I mean, it's like nobody's signing, like, seven-year deals for, you know, at, at nine, ten million. It's like, I saw an NBA player the other day. People are like, why are you tweeting about the NBA? I'm like, this dude, this dude, I never even heard of this guy. He signed three years, $130 million. I know. And then, like, Corey Perry, who's had a long career. Love him. And now he's making $4 million bucks going to what Chicago. What is that all about? I know. Felino is, too, man. They're making a lot of money. It's a lot of old. And, and uh, because they want, you know, they've got the money. They got to get to the floor and do all of that. They got the kid coming in, so they want to have some vets around them. So I get it. So they're overpaying like big time to bring these guys in. Yeah, there were some cool signings, like Ryan O'Reilly and stuff. Yeah, I know. It's a big but deal. He got four and a half. You know I'm what not I'm saying? looking at the dollar. So amount. all I'm saying is Corey Perry, who played almost, he's played what, 15 years, maybe more. Yeah, dude, he's Hart up Trophy, Stanley Cup winner, and he's made a shit ton of money. His career earnings are 92. Point five million. He's almost made a like hundred million dollars. Yeah, and this dude I've never heard of in the NBA signs three years, one hundred and thirty million, dude. There's five guys on the court. <laughs> yeah, but there's like not five guys on the team. Yeah, but the f- you got five guys. I feel like everybody's getting paid twenty million bucks in that league. They well because they, that league's that league's healthy, man. They're you know they they're they're fucking. So huge. I listen. I talk to a lot of agents. Oh, the WNBA. They're oh, they're look, making down. They're getting a little no, cocky. Their time is coming. Who's the other chick that came out and said, I, "America's trash"? Ah, like God, she, they she, are a cocky hold on, she, group of females. She lefty or righty? <sighs> she's irrelevant. Is she playing. <laughs> she playing the post or is she play? She's irrelevant on the perimeter. She's chirping the country so bad and double down. Like God, you are. Wow, you're Who a confident was woman. Was she first team all defense? Do you know? I is mean, she a rim protector? All I look at is when I watch that, like you just look at the, um, you look at court side and it's a bunch of Andes with masks on. They're like, yay, you're fun. <laughs> and then they come out and they just bash the United States. Like, geez. Who does? I don't, I don't see chick. any of this. Oh, God, this chick's all over the place right now. Really? Her, yeah. She's kind of cute. Is she a rim protector? She's probably. <laughs> well, no, like, yeah, you know, she probably you is. Know, you got to have one on the floor. Or, yeah, she's not, I don't know. It's just whatever. Whatever. Like Akeem Olajuwon, you know, like he was a rim protector. America's trash. You are. Okay. Okay. uh, So, but listen, talking to some, a lot of agents, man, they are very angry about this economic system with the NHL. Like the salary cap only going up 1 million bucks has a lot of people very upset, very frustrated. There's no money. You got Tarasenko who hasn't even signed yet. 
I, I guarantee you can probably pinpoint the teams because if you look at like Bertuzzi, a player that I was like kind of following and like being in touch with his agent pretty often, yeah. like you kind of knew what teams were like putting offers on the table, but teams are almost like they'll say to these players right now. Like, listen, I don't want to insult you, but I have no money. So yeah. if you want to come play for three million bucks, four million, then then absolutely, I'd love to have you. But that's all we have. Like and they're G, almost embarrassed. What Bill Guerin said it was funny. He's like, "Why are all these agents acting like the salary cap went up ten million bucks this year? It didn't. Mm-hmm. I can't sign you for that much. Mm-hmm. They're in cap hell anyway in Minnesota with those two those two uh, Parisi and Suter and Suter." 15 schmill that they just got to eat every mm-hmm. year. It sucks, man. Now, Reaver's going there. That's kind of cool. No, no, he's going no, to he, Toronto. He's going to Toronto. Uh, Patty's, Patty's going. going. <laughs> Good for Patty, dude. And Reaver gets a three-year deal. Like, he's still kicking it, man. Like, he's still doing enough mm-hmm. to keep fucking playing for another three years. Good for you, Reaver. I, 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 like, I like him for a lot. For him to get a three-year deal. Jesus. At 1.5? 1.3, yeah. Wow, 1. man. 35. Good for you, dude. At 34, 35 years old? Yeah. You know what? He kills guys. He's the toughest guy in the league. And he'll love the attention he's going to get there. Of course. This guy now, I mean, he's just like setting himself up for his post-career, to oh, be honest. Oh, he could do whatever he wants. He will. Now, will Patty be on a panel? I don't know. But Reaver could. Reaver will be. Reaver will be. You Patty think- I don't, Patty could do what he wants. I don't think he's, you know, I, what's the word, Andy, to be able to break down systems and stuff like that. I think he's going to be a good podcast guy. I don't know if Patty he'll get he'll get any he'll get all the offers because of who he is and mm-hmm. what he's done mm-hmm. and he's fun and he's cool, but I don't know if he's going to be on a panel. I think Reaver would be on a panel. I think uh, Patty. I think Patty's pretty smart, honestly. When you when you talk hockey with him, he can break break it down. I didn't say he's not smart. Yeah, I just think that I don't know if that's going to be his. I'm just his calling. Just calling to be on a panel. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But well, there's only so many panel spots. No shit. And when you compare it to a number of people who are on panels right now, Cam, I, I don't know what the prerequisite is. So well, you got to be entertaining. Okay. I well, know your shit. Well, that's not a prerequisite right now. But oh, I see what you're saying. I'm just saying. I see what you're saying. You put a lot of people diggy. on panels. Pa- Andy's just, digging a little bit. You know, I like it. I, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, I do know what you mean. They, they don't tend to like say, I do. well, you have to be entertaining and to, we'll hire you. Well, no. They, they hire like a lot of people. Yeah, I know that you're like, what the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, though, listen, when you play that long, people love you. You're gonna have any opportunity, every opportunity possible to do whatever the fuck. I'm you worried want. about Toronto, though. I, I really am. I'm no, very worried don't about lie. Toronto. Don't no, lie no, 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 no. Don't, don't, I don't know if they can. I don't know if they can you handle this up. much like testosterone and coming inside the room. I mean, how are they gonna handle that? I mean, I mean, Marnie and Matthews, everybody, Neil, can they handle this no, much testosterone coming into the room with Domi with uh, Reeves, Reaver Dolan. with Bertuzzi. I mean, these guys, they're, they're coming in like Good. They filled need testosterone. with testosterone. They need more testosterone. But how do you Andy? think those other guys are going to handle it? Like, oh, my God. It's like, it's a guy, you guys are a little too rough. You guys need to calm down. I'm getting scared in here. Okay. <laughs> this is a safe zone. Okay. It's not a safe zone now. Not anymore. Reaver's going to kick that door down. Do- what up? Doobie made it a safe zone. Doobie did make it a safe but zone. But I will say Toronto, like, you know, it's so funny to me. I mean, I mean, even like, you know, it's all over Twitter, media, fans. What? I mean, they just get so excited, and I, and I yeah, love it. I like that. And so good. I don't know how much better they are, you know? I mean, they 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 added, you know, some muscle. Need to bend. You know, Reaver probably is not going to factor into, you know, a, a playoff situation. Maybe. He might. He might. He's going to rock guys and get that crowd crazy, I dude. I know, but it's like, you know, listen, One point Cam, six, at the end, he's not 27. Yeah, it, it's just... It's not going to get any easier, but he's going to add some 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 something Oof. off the ice for sure, and totally. and on the ice he's going to make those guys play a little bit bigger. Bertuzzi's going to bring something to the table. He's good, obviously. man. I like him. I like Domi um, too. Maxi boy, what's up, baby? You know, and 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 Domi. You know, he I like he it. Kerfoot, Kerfoot leaves. Domi comes in. You know, Domi's he's played on like seven teams. It's hard to believe he's played on that many teams. I know he has. You know what I mean? He's still a young player. He follows all our stuff, by the yeah. way. I like Maxi boy and I like Ty. So he, he's coming off a real strong season, but again, could only get a one year deal. Cam. I mean, I'm sure he could have gotten Sucks. multiple years from maybe some places where he, he you know, <gasps> chose not to sign. Yeah. No, but no dude, doubt. like all these players essentially just kind of betting on themselves to, uh, to take the one year deal. Bertuzzi, I mean, he could have signed a one-year deal all over the place. Carolina, Calgary, Dallas, um, Calgary. Florida. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, 
And that's why when I look at Tarasenko, like, is this guy all of a sudden? I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting because Vladimir Tarasenko, I guarantee if you talked to him two years ago and you said, hey, because all, all, remember I said all the time, or how many times did I say, like, him wanting out of St. Louis and asking for a trade, it was always about that next contract. Fuck yeah. Always about the next deal. Where can he put himself in the best position to get that big deal on the next contract? He fired his agent, hired a new agent, created some shit, you know, behind the scenes, you know, with the trade request. And now, after thinking probably two years ago, I'm going to get a Panarin-type deal. I'm going to get a deal that starts with a nine. Now, all of a sudden, is he even going to get five? Will he get four? Will he get four and a half? Is he going to get any term whatsoever? You you think that he thought that he was going to get nine million dollars yeah. the last couple years? Eight, nine, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Eight times eight? Kind I don't of? know if he thought that going into free agency this year. Like going to his 40 but, years old. But I bet you coming out of like, you know, oh. 2019 when they won the cup and whatever, Mate, like he's I looking at that. that next deal, man. I can see that. He's thinking that, and I bet you the family's thinking, like they're like, hey, listen, that next deal is going to be the one that sets us up. Now, well, now all of a sudden, and he's made a shit ton of money, don't get me money. wrong. Yeah. But, you know, money. they spend a lot of money too, right? Of course. So, so you're, you're relying, you're thinking ahead, you think you're going to get that deal. I know, dude. And now here you are in, in your low 30s. You're coming off a couple of seasons where you're not producing a ton. Mm-hmm. Nope. And teams have no money. Can I give a hot takeout? Mm-hmm. Connor Bedard won't be the best player coming out of that draft. Maybe not. I, I, I keep I saying just, at some point. Dude. And somebody you know, messaged me and said, well, Alexi Le, uh, Lafreniere, you know, he was, uh, he's been a bust. I'm like, uh, not really. He's, he's pretty good. Like, he. He, he went class. to a good team. Yeah, and he, that draft class wasn't... You get these guys that are taken first overall that go to, like, the shitty teams. Yeah. And, you know, I know there's a reason why the Rangers had the first overall pick, but, like, look at all the superstars that's surrounding him. He doesn't get all the, the ice time opportunities and the power play and all that that a lot of these other young guys walk into... I agree. ...where they can immediately put up 50, 60 points. Lafreniere's got to play behind guys. I know he does. Like Kreider but, and Panarin and all these guys. But so what, though? Like, mm-hmm. if you're good, you're good. I don't give a fuck who you're with. Yes. Like, you, they're going to they're gonna find But all I'm saying play. is I don't know if he's a bust. You know what I mean? No, no, no. I, yeah, yeah. We Ka- said that. He's not a bust. Capo Caco. Now, uh, listen, he, t- he was taking second overall. I know. A ton of hype. I remember watching him in the World Juniors being like, wow, this dude's unbelievable. And so maybe maybe he could potentially be headed down that road, although, you know, he kind of came alive Watch last that, season. Too. that Russian kid, dude. He could fucking fly. Watch his highlights. Just the way With he the kid that went to Flor- uh, Mitch- Philly? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'd roll the dice on that, dude. Get that fucking kid over here. Well, I, listen, here, here, everyone's like, well, I ran into his agent in the airport, and he says he's going to turn, he's going to be in training camp next year. Like, mm. getting out of those contracts. Right, Andy. Like, here, here, here's how it goes down, because I talked to a couple agents who deal with a lot of Russian players who come over, because I asked. How do you get him out of the contract? And I've seen this happen with lesser players in the past. A guy like Yuri Laterra, for example, yeah. when he came here, yeah, yeah. and I think he had two years left on his deal, wasn't nearly as highly regarded as this guy, but was a pretty big name over there in this the KHL. Kid, this kid looks... you got to write a check, and you got to write a fat check. Fuck yeah. And I don't know who's going to write that check for him. Well, you better figure out somebody. he's going to have to buy his way out of that get contract. Get him out of there. Mm-hmm. Get him out of there now. But he shouldn't have signed the three-year deal. That sucks, man. Do you hear what happened to his dad, dude? Yes. Yes. Dad's found in a pond. They're living together. Do you know what happened? No. Well, I got, apparently the story is like he had just something in terms of some communication with a KHL team or whatever about like, hey, Andy. he wanted him getting out of the deal and Andy. stuff like this. He wanted out of the contract so his kid could have an easier path to get to the NHL. Dude. And then all of a sudden he just like left the house and said, I'll be right back. And he never came back. I know. I feel bad for that kid. So do man. I. Did you see the kid's brother? Did you look, did you see that Russian kid? Do you see his face? He yeah, looks, he looks like, like he's ready to go twelve Dolph rounds. Lundgren he does. and Rocky Four. He does. Then his brother. Did you see his brother when he stood up? His brother's like six foot four. No. Got that jawline. Oh really? He looks like Dolph Lundgren. Like this kid. I just listen. I don't know shit because we don't. I watch these kids in World Juniors. I watched. I, I watched the World Juniors tournament. You see these highlights, and I just think some of these kids, man, they are so fast. And I, I know Connor, like he's not, he's not, he's not explosive speed, and I know he's got great hands, and I know he's got an unbelievable shot. But some of these other kids, man, you watch their highlights; they are so fucking fast. And I'm like, God, dude, like, I don't. That draft is so loaded. I don't think Connor Bedard's going to be the best player to come out. Well, of who it. is? I don't know yet. Probably the Russian kid. 
Maybe this Leo Carlson, who kind of seems he like he walks like a fucking stud that day. He sees like he's six. You see four. him walk into the stage. Yeah, he's like boom, like badass looking, slick back hair. I didn't think awesome. it was a good idea. Listen, I'm not going to chirp like Sportsnet because you guys yeah. do a great job. But what? Don't mic players and try to interview them at right after they got drafted as they're walking to the stage to get their jersey. Man, they're in like yeah. Get, let let them, leave them alone. Let, man. let, let them, them take in on. the moment. I agree. They're like asking this one kid. I think it was Reinbacher. Who went fifth overall God, to Montreal? Gary Price. Oh God, Gary Price. Oh my God, we'll talk about the it. fuck. Okay, so listen. I like him. Reinbacher. Yeah, who's a hell of a defenseman. Apparently, he's getting like death threats. And like, Montreal, settle down. Calm down up there. Are you really Aren't doing you that? Aren't you peaceful? I thought we were the ones. Canada. That are crazy. Listen, I just gave you my list. The stricky, the stricky list of top of the friendliest countries in in the world. No, and they're up I, there. I put Canada on my list. No, they should be. And up now there. I may have to take them off. I don't know. They're crazy when it comes to like. Why are stuff. they being so mean to this kid? He's What'd from like do? Switzerland. Death threats. Why are you, why did we t- shouldn't have taken you? I mean, well, like, go prove yourself and they'll okay. love you. So anyway, so he gets drafted. He's hugging his mom and dad. Why he's hugging him? Uh, what do you think about getting drafted right now? And, I like it. And and no, he's like crying. Family's crying. Yeah. And then he's like walking up to the stage. I can't imagine what that out of body experience must feel like, dude. To walk to the stage. Bright lights. They got your video playing. Yeah. Your entire organization's waiting for you. Yes. Gary Bettman's waiting for you, and you you got a you got an earpiece in, and they're like, "What are your thoughts about getting drafted to Montreal?" It's Emily Kaplan. Hi, no, how are you? He's not like answering them. I, know. I don't blame him. He's just like, let me enjoy. He's this. just trying to like, whoa, what an emotional moment. So let's not do that. Probably not a good idea. We get to talk to him two minutes after he gets yeah, his jersey and gets the pa- picture. Let's not mic him as they're walking to the stage, man. They're not emotionally prepared. Nobody is to handle that. Yeah, I know. And then, uh, and then, Carey Price, <laughs> he just look, he looks out of it, man. And we're trying to get him on, and he follows us on Instagram and stuff like that. Follows all that stuff, but like, I hope he's okay. After I hope that. he's okay because I, I, he just didn't look right. Like, were they? Was it because that they they probably switched their pick? Real quick, and he's probably like, no, Wait, th- go up there and do it. I'm like, who is this he? Is, this is why. This is why Fortune 500 CEOs are like, yeah, this is why I don't pay NHL athletes hundreds of millions of dollars to do commercials and to endorse my products the way like I do NFL and NBA players because these guys all freeze. I mean, Patrick Marlowe. Oh God, he called him the first overall pick. He's like, with the first overall pick to say, I'm like, no, 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 you're picking fourth, Patrick. Wow, what's wrong with these guys? You're not picking first. And, what, and then like, Pekka Rennie is like, uh, the National Predators select. Uh, he's like looking around. Oh like no. he, I'm like, dude, you guys need like a fucking teleprompter Jesus. or what? Has it, have you ever it's been like, on camera before? It's like worse than the referees who can't even like announce a tripping penalty. Have you been on camera before? Like you can go play. Are you but once nervous? you get that camera in your face and you got to speak, you, you look like a child. They bring these former like NFL players on the stage, and they're, they're like, like what's, what's up? What's up, baby? Let's With go. The seventh what's up, baby? Pick, what's Let's up, go. the Oakland Raiders Let's go. Take. Let's go. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're, they're, all, they're just like, and they're, and they're all guys, hi. Hi. Um, With I, the fifth pick, what, Montreal. What do I do? Uh, uh, I, 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 uh, hockey's cool. No, no. Calm down. Jesus dude. Christ. Relax. Don't be putting these players up there asking them to do this. Jesus. Carey Price. God, he looked. God, that's horrible. Poor guy. I feel bad for him. He's a good dude, man. Like, the last couple, he did that, like, weird video with a gun. I'm like, oh, I what? Like a, what? What, what? What video? He did, like, a video about the Second Amendment and, uh, you know, gun rights and stuff like that. I'm just like, oh, boy. Hey, I agree with you. But you, you put yourself a, out You there. do a video like that. People, half these psychos. Well, they'll especially fucking, in Montreal. They'll man. be like, you're off. You love guns. You 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 want to see children die? No, no, no. I just I want to protect my. Do you family. want the? Um, okay, it's always what? interesting how different teams do it. I like when Army did. Okay, it. He, Army just says I don't need to get up there and talk. It's not about me. It's not Tony Feltrin, the head of amateur scouting. Yes. he's put in all the work. Exactly. They're the ones that kind of created this list. Although Doug Armstrong was heavily involved this year, having a top ten pick and three first round picks. Goddamn right. But he's like, this is his time. 
you always get like sometimes you get the president be like we'd like to welcome all of you and everybody watching thank you, back Nashville. in Senor Frogs back in our downtown thank you Nashville we hope you're having a great draft party thank you Vegas thank you Nashville thank you David Poyle you are the greatest the thing we've ever seen congratulations thank, Vegas Vegas thank you for beating <laughs> us in the second round oh my thank God. you we love you now fuck I'm gonna that. turn it over to our head of scouting or our general manager it's like just what? pick the fucking kid why did you need to talk good lord no one needs to hear from you I want to thank Nashville and the Predators for putting on. No, no, no. Just go Kyle Dubas is like, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to make the pick, and he's going to thank Vegas and thank David Poyle. Nerd. Again. He doesn't even turn it over to his scout. It's like the scout didn't exist. It's all about him. He's like, I made the pick. I actually saw him in downtown. I was walking back to my room, Excellent. and uh, and I, I saw Doobie, and I was actually going to say hi, but like all of a sudden, right next to him, they weren't even together. I ran into... Uh, Ray Bennett, so I'll give him a shout out. Yeah, Ray Bennett, what's up, baby? I like him a lot, man. Assistant coach with Colorado. Yep, for Ray Bennett who was a great. Know. He was a coach here. Do you see? Uh, I liked uh, Chicago's GM too. Young kid. Oh, he he. No, he's cool. No, now I like him. Do you see what he did? Like he was had his hat on backwards, just walking down, just and they chilling. Invented, he didn't. He didn't. He just like no. I answer these questions. Yeah. No one even knew who he was. No. He played it so cool, man. I yeah. like that guy. Yeah, me too. I do. I didn't know. I didn't dislike <clears throat> him. I just didn't know didn't because know Chicago got. So weird as an organization. Yeah, they and did. And they had, like, remember they had, like, 500 broadcasters, and they had, like, I, they, I didn't know what was going on there. It, the organization got out of whack for, yeah. a, number, for a number of I reasons. Think. And so maybe Bedard will come back in. So you're really feeling that about Bedard. Like, yeah, you, I, what, what, I is know. it just, like, an intuition? Like yes. Because he's, t- he's small? Yeah. It's just, an, just the way he skates. I watched that, like the Fidelli kid or and Fantilli. Then the, Fantilli, and then the Russian he, kid. He's and a then, big kid. And too. then the Leo Carl. Like, you watch those guys skate. Mm-hmm. They are so fast, dude. They get up and out. And I feel like Bedard, and this is just me, guys, who gives a shit. I think he can still get going. Though. I don't, I'm not like, Bedard could put up 140 points. I, I don't, I'm not, like, I'm rooting for him. I want superstars to be superstars. I just look at some of these other guys, man, that aren't really talked about as much as him. Fuck, are they faster than shit? And they scoop by guys, and they're just like, wow. And then you watch Bedard. Bedard makes it look really easy. Mm-hmm. But some of these guys, man, they got breakaway speed. And it's like, I, these guys are going to put up some I points. Know, but whenever he's on the ice with those guys, he's always the best player on the ice. I'm just you saying. You know what I mean? You're right. And he, he showed up at a young age at a big tournament, man. And he took the – I watched it. It was on the other day mm-hmm. against uh, Slovakia. Okay. Against uh, the you kid that Dvorsky. Blue, yep, the Blues dude, he's sick. He's fucking I'm sick, too. I watching him yesterday. Whoa. Dude, he has, like, eyes in the back of his head. Like, his edge work. I should have went with you. He's not, like, super explosive either. No, he's not. So this is where. You got to be on a skating or something. Yeah, he's not, like, he's not, like, blowing you away with the skating. But his his edge work and his heaviness on the puck and, like, supposed to go his, six, right? his skill level. Like, you combine all that together. Do you think, Doug, whenever they're up, they're, like. a hockey player. Were like, this kid's not drafted yet? Fucking right. Oh, yeah, they were pumped up. They are like, whoa. I mean, they had his name in the back of the jersey already. Wow. You know? It's always interesting, man. All these teams, they bring a duffel bag full of jerseys, right? And they always have a number of jerseys that are already, you know, the smart organizations. I don't know if every organization does this, but I know some that do. They put names on the back of the jerseys. So you've got, like, you know, somewhere there's, like, a Columbus jersey probably with Carlson on the back. You know what I'm saying? Or there's an Anaheim jersey with Fantilli on the back. Anaheim surprised a lot of people. I just hope they didn't try to get too cute with the second overall pick. I could see Patty Verbeek kind of being like, um, uh, you know, everyone's telling me I got to take Fantilli. Everyone's saying Fantilli, Fantilli, Fantilli. Like, no, we're going to do our own thing. We think this kid's better. But Fantilli, man, had a Fuck. historic freshman season in he college. You just don't see that. You get to see him play against men at the World Championships. He was the consensus number two for pretty much everybody. He's a big kid, too. I didn't see any real mock drafts that had him going ahead of Leo Carlson. So I, I respect that about Verbeek, that he's like, no, we do our own thing. We have our own board. This is who we want. But the last thing you want to do is fuck that up, man. I just, I, 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 I hope Carlson ends up being who they think he's that's going to be. That's an organization changer if you fuck that you up. You fuck that up, that's, that's five years. Yeah. Well, somebody's Maybe gonna, more. But, but, like, it's not like, like, that kid's going somewhere in the top three. So it's not like... Somebody no. else is going to fuck up on him if he's no good. Like, somebody's going to take the heat on that. But, I would, no, my point is if Fantilli ends up being, like, way better. <laughs> you see the way he's yeah. – he, I like Fantilli. I'm watching him during the draft, and he's congratulating everybody. He walks down. He's cool. Congratulates. You, you can just tell it's genuine. Mm-hmm. It's not just like, oh, here you go. Uh, he's a big kid. Yeah. Like, he seems cool, man. 
He's probably wheeled a lot of chicks in, high, in college, too, that guy. Jeez, at Michigan? Wee. At Michigan. Goddamn right. Uh, I guess I'll sign. Yeah, go sign, baby. And he even, I think there's an interview of him, and uh, he brought up, like, who do you want to play for? He said Columbus, which is odd. But then he got drafted by Columbus, but I think there's an Really? Yeah. Who would you, I, I think <laughs> I'd rather play that. for Columbus than Anaheim. Ooh, really? I mean, Anaheim. Really? I know you got the lifestyle with the beach and everything, but, like, I, living in that, like, I hate so traffic, dude. Dude, I hate it so much. I hate traffic. I, I hate just feel it. like it's really congested. It's like you're not in L.A., so you're kind of like the second-class citizen, even as a hockey team. So you're still behind, like, USC and UCLA oh, and yeah, so the, Dodgers, the Dodgers. The oh, Dodgers. I know that, but I just <laughs> yeah. feel like the life. You're underneath high school. Dude, football teams in Columbus. Dude, you're not even like <laughs> you know. You're, you're, you are. Yeah, you are. You're behind like Columbus High School. Yes. Yes. That has an unbelievable football team that doesn't yes. lose. Yes. Yeah, you're behind. Them. I know you are. <laughs> you you know. are. It's but, all good. You but, can hide there. But you're you're close to Ohio State. Those young guys, you know, they've got guys to hang out with and stuff and like that. And you could build That's, a mansion. I know. I on know. a lake. I know. And people say the golf course is there. Beautiful. Great. Dude, so, Columbus is awesome. So dude. I don't really know. Is. I just feel like it's probably easier for families to get in and out of too. Maybe I don't know. And I'm tough, man. It's a tough. It's a tough People market. who play there love it. Of course. If you and make a lot of money, yeah. you're going to love yeah, it. And we're going to talk to Johnny Gibson here. We'll get his take. Johnny what? He made a lot of money. God damn. He's still making a lot of money. He's young, too. He's 28. He needs to get the hell out of there. Get, dude, he's good. Why wouldn't Jersey want him? Well, I think a number of teams do, but it's, again. It's a lot of money. Like who who has money? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody has, going? like, everybody's up against the cap. Yeah, dude, they are. And, and. Yeah, they are. It's it's crazy. What's up with Arizona, dude? Like, what's up with Clayton? You like Keller? those suits? They all wore yeah. the same suit. Yeah, I don't mind. Two that. years That's in a cool. row. That's cool. I don't it? mind that. No, be be different. Listen, Arizona, you got nothing going for you. You have nothing. Yeah, they go- took a couple of Russians though. Dude, I know they did early. Those kids are good too. Fucking probably really good. And they're probably That's a couple of years away. You know There's what I'm saying? There's a couple Russians that they got picked mm-hmm. that are going to be. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. you just don't know them. Mm-hmm. They're over there dominating. Yep. And the Russian kids know they're going to come over here and they're yeah. going to fucking dominate. Hey, listen, Billy Armstrong is very good, too. Like, he's not. I, like Billy. I, I just trust his his uh, evaluation process. For him to make those picks when you consider the safer players that were available at the time, I, I don't know. Thanks, buddy. I what? mean, again, like, you know, hey, you can say rebuild all you want. And you can say, hey, we're five years away, three years away, we're going to rebuild. But if you fuck up on your draft picks, you're, you're, you're 10 matter. years away. It doesn't matter. No doubt. I hope he, I, I, I'm rooting for him and I'm rooting for that organization mm-hmm. in a way where I just want hockey to be better. And mm-hmm. right now, you're playing in front of 4,000. Andy, that's goddamn embarrassing. No, they're embarrassing. So you pick a guy and he's like, yes, I'm excited about playing for Arizona. Although I just played in front of more people last year. In college and juniors <laughs> than I am in the fucking yeah. NHL. Columbus it's High School. Sad. Columbus High School gets more. More people. Their football Columbus team. Columbus football team. <laughs> the freshman fucking football team of Columbus they gets get more, more people than the than Coyotes. Arizona. That it's just embarrassing for the league. I feel bad for Clayton Keller, although he's chilling. Like, don't get me wrong, but Clayton's a superstar. He is a superstar. And like he's just buried down there, man. Like he's buried. No one talks about Arizona. It's only negative shit. I don't I feel like people do talk. They're like in the negative. News, it's all it's, negative. It is. They, they don't talk about like, hey, how what great you, they Of are. course, no. It's a joke. <laughs> but they, they have got a, children in there that children are like, where am I at? Here, we got to get these kids and watch these games because there's nobody watching. It just sucks, man. They, I, I feel they, bad. They, they've got a good coach. Okay. You play in a junior rink. Mm-hmm. The Actually, no, I think about it, like uh, – the college team gets more fans in there. Arizona State, they probably get more fans in there. That sucks, Andy. It's horrible. Probably. It's a hor- of course they 100%. do. 100%. It's a horrible situation. It's a horrible situation. Listen, people just don't care about hockey there. They don't. I lived in the state for a long time, yeah, and did. I know that they don't. the youth hockey has really gotten better because you've got a lot of former players who have stayed there and lived there. That's true. And are coaching. That's true. But it doesn't have the impact on the society or the community as a whole, man. They don't give a fuck about like, hockey. They were interviewing those guys whenever the voting went down in Tempe, and some of these guys, what, hockey? I don't want them building that rink here. Like, What? You don't want you no, that revenue? Noise violation. There's no violation. I'm, <laughs> I ain't doing none of that. Okay. Well, okay. You don't want. They don't you talk wanna, like that. There. You, no, they don't. But that's just how I'm going to mm-hmm. interact with it. But, like, you don't want a billion-dollar rink? 
and all that revenue, and people have jobs and fucking. Are yeah, you but kidding? here's the deal. Now, <laughs> Arizona is saying that they they have other options. Okay. okay. So, so, Good God. so what see. a disaster! <laughs> I don't I hate it. It's horrible. What are you doing for the Fourth of July? Dude, I, I might bring the family out. God, did I? I, thought I might shit. bring the family out for Fourth of July. What oh, are you? What are you God. having? I'm going to a uh, the neighbor's house. They're cooking brisket right now. No, that's today. Oh yeah. Oh no, today is the Fourth of July. No, it's not. When Tomorrow this, is. Well, I know, but when this comes out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, you're confusing me. Mm-hmm. What am I doing today? I'm going to a party. My neighbor's having a barbecue. We can't shoot off fireworks next to the golf course because they'll fucking kill us. But there's going to be huge fireworks going off at the clubhouse and stuff like that. I'm going to cruise around and. We golfed yesterday. I oh God, I was barbecuing. Oh man! Did you keep Eating, score? Drinking? Nah, no, not this time. Of not, not ever. <laughs> Kate, Cam, so Kate hit one two hundred down the pipe, and no, it she actually didn't. made me mad. No, she didn't. Yes, she did. Two hundred, probably one fifty. That's a well. You're taking fifty yards off already. Can't I just exaggerate I mean, a little bit? Probably, like I fucking rounded it up to seventy five. And it's not me. I'm not bragging about me. It's her. And I, I'm like, God. I looked at her. I'm like, she out drove me. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh. She's getting pretty good. You need to and get on the sexy. range. I don't know why you just don't go over there and just hit balls. I do. I could do my best. Oh, you know we did the... No, lap. like put some like AirPods in, Cam, and just like, yeah. like meditate. Of course. Get, get, find get, get in groove, the zone. Find, find your just rhythm. Just hit some balls. Find your rhythm. Last night, uh, we took uh, those glow-in-the-dark uh, glow golf balls. I had my friends over, and we went down to the, the green and uh, putted around for money, listen to music. Oh, for money. These little glow-in-the-dark uh, balls. And what what are you betting like uh, like if twenty you, bucks if, a pop? No, like if you hit a if you get it in, then you yeah, you will put our balls out. Mm-hmm. Everybody has their own color, red, white, and blue. And then uh, we put from way far away, and like whoever gets in gets money. We throw down a cash, and it's fucking win. Mm. I won some coin. Then I spent it on Happy Canada Day to all my people up there. By the way, I got lots of people <laughs> listening in Saskatchewan. Everybody, I, I'm hearing from all y'all. Oh, I hear we from all you guys. It. I love all you guys. Appreciate out there, it, baby. I love it. Hey, can I give a shout out to Ray Whitney? Sure. Or to Ryan Whitney. Ryan Whitney? Yes. Or Ray. Ray is cool as hell, Ray's too. Ray's cool as hell, man. But Ryan Whitney is cool as shit, too. Love Ryan Whitney, too. My is wife nice and I you? ran... Oh, my God. We, we ran into He's Ryan. Best, dude. I ran into him a couple times, actually. But uh, late night on uh, one of the nights, maybe the, like after the first round, man, came and hung out, sat down with my wife and I, dude. We fucking shot the shit for a while. Super... My wife loves him. She loved Ryan. You know, like he's like very like classy, like and he like listens, he pays attention, yes. he engages in the conversation. I know. He's just cool as shit, man. I want to give him like a shout him out. Too. Yeah. Well, we're heading out to his neck of the woods, you know, coming up very soon. Yeah, too. you're going to Boston, man. Andy, Andy can't can't chill on a weekend. He's got he's got to go out of town every single weekend. <laughs> every single weekend, you're out of town. I think it's good for the soul, though. Traveling I think is it's good very for the good soul. for you. Well, it's not good for your bank account. Although you get deals, you know what you're doing. Andy doesn't just spend money. I've never even seen Andy spend money, to be completely honest with you. I've never seen him eat. I've never seen him spend money on anything. So when Andy says he goes to all these places, like he'll have, he'll have a, he'll know a guy up there that gets a free room. Then you'll know somebody Take that has something. Fishing. Then like you'll know something, or then you get your your points, so you get a free flight. So there's always something. When I go out of town, I'm sp- fucking spending money like a psychopath. Yeah, yeah. You know, my kids are pumped up, though. But I but like, listen, I, I like to be at home. I'm having an issue, though, like man, because I, I manifested the 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 bear encounter a few years ago because I wouldn't stop talking about it. And now I've been talking about sharks nonstop. I'm having dreams about it, Cam. Where do you think the shark? What do you think? Jaws and came so from? then what do you think? Came even from? even Whitney. Was like, yeah, you got to watch that. He goes, especially if you see some like seals and stuff around there, dude. No, you, you got to get away from that. Get away. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it that much. But where do you think Jaws, the movie, came from? Was it from? on the Cape? Yeah, dude, it was oh. right around there. And then in Jersey, back in the 20s, a shark monster was killing kids and stuff like that. Yeah, dude. No way. In the 20s. Really? There's some horrific shark I, I don't, I don't even want to hear about that I'm right just now. Saying. Why are you trying to like... I don't mean to be like... No, 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 no. Don't even bring that No, don't be scared of tiger. You know what you need to be scared of? Mm. Not sharks. What do you think it is? What do you think it is? It's not sharks. Like a kidnapper? No, 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 no. What do you think it is when you take your kids to... Somebody kidnapping No, no, no. What do you think it is whenever... Well, you probably. What do you think it is? The most dangerous thing. Of what? When you take your kids to the beach, what's the most dangerous thing? Stingrays. No. Hold on. Um, rip current, dude. 
Drowning, well, drowning. Yeah, well, then that's I, number I, one. You, you had to think that. about it. No, 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 no. no, everyone knows that. Did you see that football player die the other day? No. Fucking quarterback. It wasn't even. It was like a yellow flag. Means be cautious. He's out there in the middle of the day, and he drowns on a yellow flag. Meaning like kids can go out there. He drowned because a rip current got him, and he did, he couldn't he couldn't settle in. He, mm-hmm. he just got he got caught up, and they couldn't save him. Professional athlete. He was young. He got he got sucked out and couldn't get back in. Probably swallowed a bunch of water. Oh That's what you got to worry about more than anything. Not sharks, not stingrays, none of that shit. It's a rip current. When little Ty goes out there, just keep an eye I on him. I don't think I'm gonna let. Don't him mess do with that. me on that. I'm not Andy. gonna let him Seriously. do that. Seriously, there's like a big don't time like uh, water park that's not far away too. I think we'll, take him there. We'll, that's cool. We'll go there, but just sit on the swimming. beach because listen. Yeah, yeah, when you yeah, go, they can, they you want to be able to. Beach. But you want if you're gonna go on a vacation, it's nice to not pay and get entertainment. Meaning. You're not paying for the beach, mm-hmm. so you're there. You could do all your stuff at the beach and not spend any money. You could bring your own cooler. You could do your thing, but now you got to go to water park. Now you're spending money the whole fucking day. You got to buy this. You got to do that. You could spend money to get in there. If you could find a way where the beach is safe and you could chill on that without spending a bunch of coin, mm-hmm. that's what you do. But just be careful with the fucking riptides. You'll get sucked out, Andy. I know I will. Ty will have to save your ass. It happened to me one time years yes, ago. Yes, dude, it happened to in me Mexico. too. In Mexico. Horrific. Yeah. It was horrific. It was like knocking me down. It sucked me out so fast, dude. Mm-hmm. In Jersey, mm-hmm. in the Jersey Shore, in front of a bunch of girls, when I was playing in oh Jersey. My God. Yes, fucking so, embarrassing. so embarrassing. So embarrassing. I got fucking sucked out. Like ah, got me back in. I'm like ah, and I finally didn't. The wave took me, and I hit my shoulder. My shoulder subluxed mm. before training camp. I almost drowned. People were like, "Oh God, Cam!" And then I ripped my shoulder out two weeks before training camp because I was at the shore. Oh, party. that's how you did it. Yes. I was at the shore. Well, one time I fell off my boat, mm-hmm. and then this one a wave got me and sucked me. Boom! It hit me down so hard it ripped my shoulder out. Oh. I know. I want to give uh, Roman Polak a shout out too. Big wiener. Ran He's into him on the wiener. street. Had no idea who he was. Does he look different? Yeah, he does. Does he speak in English? I forgot. Great English. All right, yeah, get him on. The Polak baby, huge wiener. Who would you rather have, Nylander or Marner? Marner. Okay. I, I know Nylander is the hot guy right now because he just, you know, had a great playoff and stuff. Look good. And he's a hell of a player. He looked better so than Marner. you could make the case. I'm sure a lot of people are answering Nylander, and I, 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 I couldn't disagree. But, you know, Marner puts up 99 he every does. year. He's, they're both good Doesn't players. get to 100, but he puts up 90, and he's a hell of a player, and he can take over. I want to get Willie's dad on. Yeah? I played against him for years, man. I liked his style. He was cool as hell. Always nice, you know. You know what I mean? The Flyers have signed Mark Stahl. Oh, really? To a one-year, 1.1. 1. 1. This is the year one of the one-year deal. One-year deals. <laughs> Everyone can play world. one year. <laughs> no, I'm just joking about uh, Matt. Matt Matthews is cool, man. He wants to win. See how much longer he's Everybody there. Does. See if he gets that extension. I Listen, I, I ran into Brad Tree Living. Um, and I, he is. And I and I have always had a lot of respect for Brad. Man, he's he's a, yeah, a good super good guy, yeah. very good cool. Reputation. Like the Leafs have a different energy to them now. That you know, Dubas has moved on. I just think I think I think Tree Living's going to bring a little bit of a different, you know, mentality. Yeah, a little bit of the attitude. A little attitude, yeah. and just look at the players who he's gone out and gotten. Man, they're and, definitely and, tougher. And this is the benefit, though. You can say, hey, there's no money, and you can't sign players. But the reality is, you get to bring in a Bertuzzi for one year. Yeah. You know, you bring in a Domi for one year. You know, like, I mean, you can bring in some guys that can kind of bring some hostility for a year. So, what, so Patty's What do you going, think Domi thinks, man? Like, what do you think that's going to be like for him to put that jersey on? Man? Oh, hell yeah, dude. I want to see that Domi jersey. I want to see that last name. He's got to wear 20. Yeah, wear 20. Because that's just Ty. Ty wore 20 with the Rangers and with... Toronto, dude, didn't he? No, he wore 28 with Toronto. Oh, 28. He's got to wear, 20. wear 28, then. 20, he, Ty wore 20, and he wore number 8 and 20. And 28. So, any one of those. But, like, yeah, dude, how cool is that? That last name on a Leafs jersey is the most iconic thing. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Probably the most iconic name. You think? I in think Leafs so. history? I think so. You think Domi's I think the Ty most Domi's, iconic name? I think Ty Domi's the most popular Leaf player ever. Yeah, Gilmore's up there. I think Ty Domi is the most popular Leaf ever. Sundin's up there. Ty Domi, more than Sundin, 
more than Gilmore, more than anybody. Ty Domi, most iconic leaf ever. Not the best, not this, the most popular. Borea, sure. Borea saw me. Oh, yeah, besides him. You know, Ty Domi. Look what he did there, dude. Wendell, Every, Wendell Clark. Oh, ooh, I forgot about that. Oh, oh well. I mean, for you to like say this off the head. Wendell, Wendell and Tyre, actually, Wendell and Tyre probably tied for first mm-hmm. more than anybody else. The most popular pl- Leaf players ever. Fucking write it down. I don't give a shit. You can quote me on that. Brad Boys. Yeah, Boise. <laughs> <laughs> Boise, love him. I partied with him last summer. During the Blues fantasy. Oh, game. yeah. Yeah, he's fucking hilarious. I missed him. I like people that laugh at me. Mm-hmm. Not at he, me, he but laughs. with me. He laughs. He laughs at everything. Yes. I love it. Mm-hmm. He's always happy. You know what I mean? I like happy people. But, uh, so fucking Patty's going to gosh dang Minnesota. And they're keeping 20% of the salary. Tampa. Tampa is. <laughs> 100 grand. <laughs> Keep that 20%. <laughs> make this thing work. But they're in hey, cap may, hell up there, man. I know. Maybe they'll find a way to bring in Terry Billy, G. Billy oh. G's like thanking Tootsies and he shit. He is. <laughs> I know. At least do that. Like, if you're going to be funny. No like, shit. Billy G's fucking hilarious. I love him. Oh, he's the best. Like, be funny. I want to think Nashville to organize it. Who gives a shit about Nashville's organization? Yeah. Who cares? You right. hate them. I want to give a annoying. shout out to Tootsies for keeping yeah, us Yeah, like Tootsies and we partied. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Be cool. Dude, Can I, somebody be cool in the NHL, please? Like, be cool. Seriously. I don't know. God damn. You're right with the NFL guys and the NBA guys. They're coming up there like, what's up, baby? Like, here's what I like about Gary Bettman, though. He's not, what, what did, uh, like, Roger Goodell, when the when the NFL draft goes on, Roger Goodell has, like, handshakes for everybody. Like, no, shut up. He's got bro, fuck bro up. hugs. Shut up. They all hate you. No, all don't. those guys hate you. They don't you. hate him then. He's about to put some, he's not some doing paper it. in their pockets. He ain't doing it. The teams are doing it. It's the commission. Like, I just look at him like, like, oh, I'm boys with all you. Those guys are fucking chirping no, he, you right when he, he leaves. He does. He you does, know what I mean? And I know. I've heard lots of people say that. Like, he has that. Like, calm down, Roger. You know, he does the the bro hugs. The bro hugs. This guy's like, get the fuck out of here. We're, we're, White boy. We're Gary's like, this is a big deal. <laughs> Hello. Go how are meet, you? Go meet your team. Yeah. And put that jersey on. <clears throat> That's funny, man. And the team's like, I'd like to thank people at the hotel for okay. their hospitality yeah, okay it's a hotel like okay i'd like to thank they're not listening uh the uber drivers for getting us around i like to safely think, i like to think that hot blonde that danced on stage last night for two hours can't say that they would never say that they would never say that remember the hot so, blonde we saw that so night? here's the uh, montreal canadians a month ago okay carrie let's practice you got a month to figure this out Okay. Just one name. Just one name. One name. So we got a month to go. Uh, I want you in every day for one hour a day. Every Monday, we're going to practice it. So he's been in like every day. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you had a month. So uh, David Reinbacher. Reinbacher. David Reinbacher. Reinbacher. Okay. okay. Reinbacher. I, they're sending him like, like emails and text messages yeah, all yeah. day long that say David Reinbacher. He had all day. And he gets out there and he, and he looks so upset. And embarrassed. Well, he looked out of it, dude. <laughs> he probably was. He looked like he wasn't there. Maybe he, he looked wasn't. like he got knocked out and stood back up. Right? You know what I mean? When you get knocked out, you stood back up. You're like, Bruh! like David Joe, Poyle, like Joe Biden looks. David kinda. Poyle, like you know, he he gave a. Oh my God, Jim Nill gave a long speech too. Oh God, calm <laughs> did you, down. Did you hear his speech yes, for GM man. of the year? I know. It was the like, longest, move along. longest speech. God. But move along. I man. love it when. Uh, yeah, maybe David Poyle plays a guitar. I don't know, but like Pekka Rene and uh, Roman Yossi, they brought out the guitar. And Poyle's and, like, "Oh, thanks." Pekka Rene's just hanging on to it. Don't even like, give it to him. Thank you for the what Gibson is this? guitar. Is it signed by somebody? You get, you gave me a guitar that I'm never going to play. Did Morgan Wallen sign that? Like, what what is the significance of the guitar? Does he play guitar? He didn't seem like he was really excited about the guitar. You know, he's probably not very excited about like stepping down. Really. I don't know. You never know. Like those guys are power hungry, man. All those. If you're a GM, dude, you like being a GM. I was thinking about that the other day, Andy. Like that has got to be. No, okay. Let's move the ownership group away. But being a GM of a team that's mm-hmm. healthy, 
and those are your guys that you drafted. Mm-hmm. That you you hired the draft the, the the guy the scouts that drafted these guys. That's your mm-hmm. team. You put that product on the ice. What a cool, what a cool job to have. That's yeah. the best job in hockey besides being a player, is being a GM, in my opinion. A coach is cool, mm-hmm. but a GM like you're sitting up top, like you're not. Like you're just in, no, you're, you're the puppet master. The best, it's, the best, it's the best, dude. President, GM, whatever. Yeah. Like you, you are. That's yours. Mm-hmm. You run that show. You run the coaches. You run fucking the trainers. You're evaluating everything. Mm-hmm. Like I loved watching Lou walk in, and just like Lou Lamarillo would walk in and sh- look at everybody. Like this is my house. You guys are playing for dude, me. Dude, I talked sh- to, shaking to hands Lou with everybody. for a while. Oh, did you? Great teeth. God, he's. I just love him so much. Unbelievable teeth. Have you ever noticed that? Hell yeah. I notice everybody's... He doesn't really age very much. He looks the same. He looks the exact same he did 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. Great, Was he nice to you? Great, incredibly. Sweetest. So nice. I know. I love that man. I root for that man. I really, really do. And Chris, his son. But they were handing out some weird deals, too. What happened? with? What are they doing? Like We're going to give you seven years at like <clears throat> $1.8 million. <laughs> No, they gave, like, Mayfield got a little over three to stay. That's okay, though. They gave, oh, yeah, no, you get the term, man. Get the, so what? He's good. Dude. Mayfield's coming off of a uh, very team-friendly deal. Yeah. Like, this guy's been playing 23, 24 minutes a night. He's and, good, dude. And he's been making, like, barely over a million. Really? For the last five years. He signed a five-year deal. This guy right. signed a five-year deal, and now he signs a seven-year deal. So, would you rather sign, you know, five years at four and a half or sign... Seven years at three and a half. I want to be Bobby just, Bonilla, just, dude. Just give me the term. Happy Bobby Bonilla Day. I know. He's still getting paid. Isn't that amazing? Bobby Bonilla. Remember him with the earrings oh, yeah. and stuff like that? He played here. Yeah. He played for the Cardinals? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Shows where I, I pay attention a lot. Yeah, no. It was like late in his career. <clears throat> but yeah, man. And then Angball, <laughs> he got a seven-year deal. I mean, I guess that's just how you... You know how much and it's, ABV, and it's funny because like the deal with Mayfield was done for quite some time, and I was reaching out to his camp like, "Hey, when are they going to announce this?" Because like everyone's nervous when you're dealing with Lou, like it can't get out type thing. You know what I mean? Oh, dude, don't you be a leaker. So you'll know it's you. So he can sniff you out. Yeah. So, fast, so uh, I I did tweet out that he was heading back there. I didn't know the actual terms of the deal and whatever, but they were like, "Ah, uh, it's it's Lou's world." What did Lou <laughs> say to you when you saw him? Um. Did you go right up to him? I, I did. Good. Always. Yeah. Jesus. Like, beeline it. Yes. 100%. Say hi. Just look him in his eyes. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he, he evaluates I to- everything. I told Lou that he should be very proud of uh, how, how so many of his former players come on with us and speak so highly oh, of him. Every single one. Maybe there was one that did. Who's the one guy that was like. Was it Rupper? No. No. It was somebody. But that was. Only one, man. And we had a lot of guys that are associated with Lou and the Devils and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, no, he's done a – God, that guy, man, like he just – Oh, he Friesen had, maybe? Jeff Friesen? Was it Freeze? No, it was not Freeze. Freeze no. loved him. Uh-uh. Remember? Freeze are like – Yeah. It was like, no, he saved me. Remember he, like, made him get on a plane to tell him, that, like – That's true. That's that he true. could have his knee surgery or something? I, I've done a couple – Lou that. I, I remember, like, driving down or having to drive somewhere just to talk to him. Mm-hmm. Not over the phone mm-hmm. kind of thing. But look, again, you're the GM. Yeah. You run the show. So sometimes I want to look at you in your fucking yeah. eyes yeah. and not over the phone. It just I wonder an interesting team, though, as an organization. I don't know where they're at. I right don't know now. where they're you at. You know what I mean? I don't. Who won? Like, who's going to be? I bet you Tarasenko, that's, I bet you that's an Maybe. option for him, too. Maybe. What What team is going to be different this year, in your opinion? Just so from now, with the signings, with the drafts, with the draft picks. I think Toronto is. I really do. I think Toronto, for the first time, is going to... Like what? Go to third round? Like, their balls are going to drop. All right, they're going to have a little bit of, like... Because Domi plays with that with edge. that edge, too. Like, he'll talk shit. Yeah, he does. You he'll know what I'm saying? It. He'll catch it, too. He's, he's going to... Like, I feel like Matthews, now, when he goes into a scrum, like, may actually, like... Push back a little Push back. And not smile and get punched in the face no. like Mitch Marner did. No. The, because I think he's going to have these guys that are going to be like, like he's going to be like Bertuzzi. That's what they sold it to Bertuzzi. Like they understand what they're getting into with Bertuzzi. Yeah, dude. They're like, listen, you can come here for a year to play with Ma- Marner or Matthews. We're going to give you no trade protection. Give you five and a half. Nobody was coming up to five and a half yeah. on a one year deal for him. Like he couldn't get that. He couldn't get to five and a half. So he gets five and a half. 
gets the no trade protection, gets to play with Marners and Matthews, and then next year the cap goes up and he gets to go right back into free agency. Pretty nice. So that's like pretty nice. The the safest choice that he could make in terms of being able to put together, you know, the the opportunity to have uh, you know a good season, put up some points, and then go back into the summer and do it all over again next year. How about uh, our boy Luchik going back to uh, Boston? He's sentimental. God dang right. What, what's up with Boston the, signing a bunch of guys to like I one know. year deals. They're dumpster diving. Although I love Shaddy, man. I'm happy he gets yeah. to go back to Boston where everything started for him. Yep. Of course, he played at BU. They get JVR Van Riemsdyk, who we That's just had boy, on. boy, baby. He just had on. So, you know, the, he, he gets signs a one year deal. I like that, man. Good for Luchik. Uh, I like Monty. I played it on the radio show, Andy. Uh, Monty's speech. Great boy, speech. Great speech. Like that guy, I just. I have so much respect for guys that have mm-hmm. been through hell. Mm-hmm. And, and hey, self-induced hell. Self-induced. Hey, hey I know how that is because everything I've ever done like, is like, on me. Like I got caught hell. Yeah. No, you got caught. Mm-hmm. And then you, you were buried. Mm-hmm. And you crawled out of it. You kept your family intact. Mm-hmm. You regrouped. You met the right people in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. And it all worked out. I would have liked to see him. And I'm just thinking of this now. I didn't think this at the time. And I, don't, I think it was a pure oversight. But I would have loved to have him thank St. Louis for believing him and giving him an opportunity when nobody else was, was doing that. I thought he kind of did that. He said my St. Louis family or something like that. Okay. But you know what I mean? Like Doug Armstrong and Tom Stillman. They took him under the Through Al McKinnis and Keith Kachuk. Um, gave him a job when, you know, and an opportunity for him to come back to St. Louis. Yeah. Where he's surrounded by friends and family, surrounded by a ton of support. Tons. Kids could get back into youth hockey, good program, playing with Barrett Jackman, all that type of stuff. Man, you could not have found found a more perfect situation for Jim Montgomery. He's got a ton of roots here in St. Louis. His wife is from here. It was like the best case scenario for him to get back on his feet. Coaching with Craig Berube, coaching on a good team, a competitive team, to get himself back in position to become an NHL head coach. No doubt, man. And even like... um I know he had to quit drinking and all that stuff. And he would, when he start, first started coming around, like all the guys, like an alumni room, he'd skate with us and stuff like mm-hmm. that. I'd have a, a show in, at Top Shooters. Mm-hmm. He'd go out there with all the alumni with us and hang out, not drink. Yeah. But he's around people that are drinking and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And he yeah. still put his foot down. No, like, I no. had some friends that like ran into him at Cafe Napoli, yeah. which is, you know, drinking water. And, and he was hanging out and like just, you know, totally had cool. dinner and stuff like that. Yep. But, I remember sitting in the alumni room, Cam, when the Dallas Stars were on television playing in the Stanley Cup final in the bubble. Yeah. And he's, and I'm, he's right in I there. I think I was and that was his team. That's the year he got let go, right? And he's just watching it like, damn. And he's just watching it. And I'm thinking to myself, man. Wow, dude. I wonder what's going on through his mind, you know? And at that time, he had yet to get hired by St. Louis. Again, to show you the support, family, friends, all of that, he came back here. So when all the shit went down, he came back to St. Louis. He did. Before he knew he had a job with the Blues. Yep. No, I know. I remember hanging out with him. And he's just like the nicest, just oh, like down to best, earth, man. like smart. And, and we had him on. We had a great interview with him yeah. on here on the on the podcast, too. For yeah, people he to go sat back right and in check there for, that out. for an hour and a half with yes, us, he man. Did. He was cool as hell. Laughing. Yeah, he laughs. I like when people laugh. Yes. I like when people laugh. Yes. Makes me feel so, good. you know, I would have liked to see I'm, – I mean, I'm happy Florida went on the run, man, but I, I would have liked to see Boston. That that was truly their last chance, man. I mean, not last chance, but, I mean, you have a historic season they and, you, and you're up three games to one they and you lose in the first yeah. round. They needed to win that series. How do you – What happened? How do you, like – Matthew happened. Deal with that. Matthew happened. Matthew and Bob happened. happened. Mm-hmm. That's what happened, dude. Matthew's like, no. No, 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 I'm taking over. And mm-hmm. he did. Matthew took over. Matthew Kachuk took over until his body said no. I still think we're going to see some uh, you know potential I mean? trades here. Good. Let's go. Like, we'll see what happens with the goalies. we got Johnny Gibson coming up here. we got Hellebuck still in uh, Winnipeg. You know, you've got the Tory Krug situation in St. Louis. We'll see what happens with that. A lot of that. drama, dude. A lot of stuff going on, which is great hey, for Kevin us. Hey, Kevin Hayes is cool as shit, too. Yeah, I dude, spent I some time cool. with him at the hotel. I was going to say. Um, I actually boy. have been talking to him a lot the last couple of weeks, you know, when all this stuff started going down. Get him on. So, he he he'll, he'll be a good fit. And I'll, I'll tell you this, man. Part of the reason, listen, they need to take some of the pressure off Robert Thomas, which I think is a big reason as to why they wanted to add a veteran center. It's like well, you, you know, no Robbie Riley Thomas. Too. You know, even though he's making a lot of money, he's still a young player, and sometimes can look a little bit overwhelmed. Yep, you're right. 
you know, taking on the responsibility of going up against the other team's top players and number one center every single night is a challenging task. It is. So dude. now I, I think bringing in a veteran will take some of that responsibility, some of that heat off of his shoulders where, you know, now Kevin Hayes can, you know, take on some of that responsibility. In Maybe not every night. In the locker room, too. And in so the locker room. Damn right. And they know. told him that. You'd be they, a man. they said, hey, we, we, we need you to Looking come young. in and help these young yes. guys, man. Get in there. And be a leader for these young guys. You're established. Show them the way. Be a leader, dude. Yes. God damn. Get in there. Yeah. I like Army. Army, uh, Doug Armstrong, obviously. Like You got Hazy, 50% off. Yeah. You got, uh, who are the other two cats? Uh, we got um, Verona. Capitan oh, and Verona. Got Verona for, for, for half off. 50% off. <laughs> it's like 50% Kapanen off. Capitan on waivers. It's like going to the fireworks stand, Andy. Mm-hmm. You got Bottle Rock. It's 50% off. Mm-hmm. When that's, get those motherfuckers. Buy one, get one free. Buy, get one of those. Now you got three guys. Yeah. Listen, I don't love Kevin Hayes at $7 million, but I, I like him a lot at three, at three and a half. half. You're goddamn right. He's 31 years old. He scores 50 points a year. He's big. Okay. Yeah. Three and a half? Are you kidding? Yeah. You're damn right. In that locker room talking to the young kids? Mm-hmm. You know. Hey, let me ask you this, though. Yeah. Um, three and a half. How do you think it impacts a player whose name is out there um, in, a, in, in a trade scenario where the player maybe, you know, refuses or, you know, chooses. I shouldn't say refuse because yeah. he should have the choice. You negotiate a no trade clause in your contract. Exactly. You should have the choice whether to no exercise the no trade or not. So he chooses to not to go back to – or not to go to Philly where, you know, they're obviously in a different situation. Kruger. Krug. Rebuild. I'm talking about Krug. How does that impact his ability to come back to his original team and all that? Like, what do you think? It all depends on how you play. Now, it is very um, – it's probably very uncomfortable knowing that your organization doesn't want you anymore. Mm-hmm. But it's also a business, and you've earned that right to either stay or go mm-hmm. or pick and choose what you want to do because yeah. you've earned that. Mm-hmm. You've earned that in your contract. So I look at Tory Krug like he's been in the league a long time. He's like, no, I know the guys on the team. Me and Doug don't have the see eye to eye. He doesn't want me, but I'm going to go yeah. there, and I'm going to prove myself. Now it's a tryout for him. Let's go, go his, play good. His teammates – understand because they probably do the same thing they do they get it they're not Mm -hmm. mad at him Mm -hmm. no you do your thing and when the opportunity presents itself for a trade that you're going to accept then we'll go but you know what you have to do you go in there and you put a smile on your fucking face you quarterback that power play and you play well it's only you just play well i I, I, and i look at it a couple different ways too man because i think if i know the team didn't want me there i wouldn't want to be there personally i agree okay and to say they don't want you there maybe is a little bit strong because no. it's business. You're trying to get a younger defenseman, whatever. Maybe shed some money, get rid of that contract. But, and I know these players, man, like, they've got young families and they don't want to bounce around from season to season, or year, city to city. But you're in the NHL making six and a half, man. Sometimes you just got to bite the bullet. Yeah. It's only for a few more years. Your kids are young. They won't even remember. And then you had the rest of your life to choose where you want to live and do what you want to do. Go to Hawaii. Whatever. Whatever the fuck you want to do, baby. Uh, that's you all I'm saying. In the bank, you, got, homie. you know, you got just, just collect your 6.5 for the next four years. Go play. No it, matter where the fuck it is. I would look at it too. That's like, the way I see it. I see it too. Like, don't burn any bridges. Mm-hmm. Don't chirp to fans. Mm-hmm. It's his business. And yeah, you're going to get ridiculed here and there from fans, but I'd just be nice. I'd be nice to everybody. I'd, I'd, I'd just work my fucking and ass. And what off. is a rebuild anyway? I mean, listen, there's a, there's a difference between know. an Arizona rebuild and yeah. a team like Philly with John Tortorella as your head coach, man. Like, eventually they're going to be good, right? You got they that got Russian that. coming in. I want to see that kid play so You bad. know, I know, I know. I want to watch him more than Connor right now. I'm curious yeah. of what this kid's going to do. Mm-hmm. And now the dad thing and like, I saw some video of him yesterday Dude. doing some shit. Oh my god, flying! He looked, he skates hard, like mm-hmm. like hard on the ice, like yeah. the way he turns and stuff. Like he's the real. Deal I think right people now. just get intrigued by Russian players I know. in general. Those are fucking like good. if he was from like Mushcha, you wouldn't even be saying this, you know? Uh, yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. But you get these Russian guys. Well, look at look at some of the Russians that come over here. They dominate, dude. There are so many good players over there that you don't even know. Mm-hmm. You can't even go over there and see anything. They're hidden. I bet you there's going to be a fourth round Russian kid. Oh yeah, that's going to be a Hall of Famer. It's going to be a Hall of Famer. Oh maybe yeah. It's going to put a thousand points up, dude. Mm-hmm. There's probably a, a seventh round fucking rounder Russian. Yeah, that's going to have a long career. Long, long career. Damn good career. You're hidden. Mm-hmm. Those guys, man. Some of those cats, dude. They're disciplined as shit. Mm-hmm. They grew up hardcore. They're fucking f- disciplined. Family. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is. 
and and they're hockey, hockey, everything. It's like military. It's like their hockey's hockey their military. is like a military. I know it's awesome, in a way. It's not in a way, but mm-hmm. it makes you discipline. Hell yeah, it does. You want to? You, you, you're, you're striving, man. You want? You kind of want to get out of your country. You want to? There's just so many good players, dude. Mm-hmm. We're gonna see a kid that got drafted late, late, late. That's gonna be of course. You see that every year from Russia. Maybe Cam's like, uh, there's gonna be a six round pick who's gonna play. No, no, no. I mean, be a Hall of Famer. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, from that's, this that's, draft. That's, that's the difference. Like, from, yeah, of course you're gonna play from this draft. Like I played. Yeah. Fourth. But I'm saying, like, they're going to be dominant, hidden over there. Dude. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of these cats, man. These Swedes come in with with swagger now. They too, do. Man. Well, they're playing with gro- they're playing with 35 year old men. But at I just 17. Think, I just think you see Sweden, you see Slovakia, you see Russia forever, Finland. I mean, like these teams that like have had a lot of international success too. How about the two Swedes uh, that uh, the Blues picked up, man? Yeah. Like Steeny Weenies over there, Alexander Steen probably scouting these cats. You know what I mean? I yeah. saw him on the ice, mm-hmm. Alexander Steen. Yeah, back in the organization. Back in the organization. I play with Steen, right? He's a good dude. Yeah. He's a good dude. Hell of a, hell of a hockey player. He won't give you his number, but he's a good dude. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, dudes, I, uh, <laughs> I remember first getting on radio. <laughs> this drove me nuts, actually. But I go, Steener, can you come on my radio show, man. Like, I'm going to interview you. It's going to be funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, wh- what are we going to talk about? You? We're going to talk about you. We're not talking about anything. We're going to talk about you. Well, okay. Just make sure, whoever, I give you my number, make sure that you don't give my number out to anybody. Go, listen, Steiner, no one gives a fuck about your number. These guys on the radio don't give a fuck about your number. If you're Albert Pujols, it's a different story. If you're Alexander Steen, Kurt Warner, there's a big difference. You're Kurt Warner. Go, no one cares about your number. Calm down. You're not Marshall Falk. Good Lord. Like, wait, what? Wait, am I going to tweet your number out? So am I going to call you? I get spam risk calls every goddamn day. Don't answer those. I don't. Steiner, don't give my number. I'm happy he's back in the so organization. I'm hey, but you know what? Out. This is why you know, these teams that see Army smart, though. He'll hire these guys. He, he won't pay them a ton of money, but he wants to He'll see, like, are you, are you, you going to work? Yeah, I want to see what you do, And baby. if you work... Then you'll be rewarded, and there's going to be a position for you inside the organization. But I want to see if you're willing to, because it's not about the money, it's not about the private planes, it's not about all of a sudden getting off the bus and somebody handing you your hotel room key and your per diem. Now you got to go to the front desk, you got to check your ass, you got to check yourself in, and you got to like pay for your own. You know, it's like it's and you got to invoice your like spend. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's just you're not a player anymore. No, so. Can you handle that? Because guys like Keith Kachuk have proven that they can, man. That guy works his fucking balls off. He's got two players, two kids playing in the, in the NHL who are bona fide superstars. Oh, no, they are. Superstars. Superstars. The biggest in the league. He made a shit ton of money. His kids have, have, you know, are going to you know, surpass Keith and his career earnings probably within the next you know, handful of I years. Know. Like, he doesn't need to be doing this, but he loves the game. And it's not about the money for him. Those are the people that I would want in my organization. That's why I wouldn't do that. I don't want to travel. Like, Steenie Weenie, you're going to have to go to fucking, you might have to go up to goddamn Iowa. Then you might have to go to fucking Sweden. Well, he'll be over in Sweden, though. And you might have to go here. But that's that's, that's tough. Mm -hmm. You know, you got kids and stuff like that. They're probably growing up playing hockey, too. Like, this is a commitment, dude. Mm -hmm. And being a scout is so difficult that you're on the road all the time. You have to get it right. If you don't get it right, dude, that could fucking put your organization mm-hmm. in a back burner for years yes. because of your decision mm-hmm. or you're too sleepy to understand who's better or whatnot. Yeah. Like, there's a lot that goes into it. Remind man. me in the close to tell you how wrong you were about that submarine vessel, too. We'll talk about that oh, in really? the close. Yeah, I got some information. Okay, like what? No, no, no. I no, had no, some no, no. people reach out to me. No, no, no. Like, oh, yeah, of course, because you don't you know, do your homework I had yourself. some people so reach you had out. What did they say? My what fact, was I wrong? My fact check. Like, what? no, 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 no. Don't do this. Well, what was I wrong on? Go ahead. Okay. Look at you little nerd boys. <laughs> and we at Creep Corps Racket Club, you guys all hanging out there? <laughs> what are they saying? Good God. Go at, ahead. At, what? At the Creep Corps Racket Go Club. ahead. What'd they say? Well, I got to find it. I got to pull it Of course it you do. And I'll, I'll have it for no, you. No, no, no. You can't just say that now. Okay. Man, I did all my home. I did my No, homework. you didn't. Okay, you, then what? You want to know what it says? Yeah. Uh, okay, listen. So, uh, how many of these uh, subs go down each year, I asked you? You said, you'd say 50. 
You're so wrong. The guy How much? said, "The guy said, LOL, fuck, so wrong. Let Cam know this. Are you, are you ready for this? With that particular sub, it was no, 50. On planet Earth, there's only 11 subs that can go down to 12,000 feet. Ocean Gate was one of the 11. It was also the only one of the 11 not certified. That excursion was to be the only sub and the only trip down to the Titanic in the entire 2023 year. No, it's not. Yeah. They know months in advance how the ocean is going to be. That week was the only week that was good for pressure depth, sandstorms, weather, current, current. all that. Yeah, I know. And they had to wait three days. Then about two weeks before the launch, it was starting to change. Yeah. And almost canceled, and then four days before, they got the okay. Tell him to go fuck himself. That's exactly what the fuck I said, <laughs> He's you from donkey Saskatchewan, dick. Get on with yourself. Cowboy, Attaboy. don't fuck with me on hey, that. Hey, thanks dude. for that, What man. did I get wrong on that? What did I get wrong on you that? You said like 50 go down a year. No, 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 no. That particular sub had 50 different people that went down there in the past mm. three years. Yes, dude. I'm just passing it along, dude. So easy to do that, eh? Yeah. We're going live for fucking three hours. Yeah, well. And I'm breaking down a thing that just happened. Yeah. And now you're going to correct me like, like I'm a fool. You want to get to Johnny Gibson? Like I'm going to fucking. You want to like get I'm to Johnny fool. Gibson? Yeah. Let's, let's go. Get, let's get to Johnny. Let's get, you, see what Andy no, no, does. No, 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 let's no, no, get no. to Gibby, baby. All you guys, I would never <laughs> do that to Andy. Like, no, no, that fact check me. I want to be fact checked. Does that, uh, is that going to um, That's a fact rattle check. Rattle you? No, that's great. But Andy will find one. We'll, we'll, you know, everybody like comments on everything. Everything's nice and funny. Yeah. We guys are awesome. Yeah. And then one guy mm-hmm. will say something, and Andy will clip it off and send it to me. Like right when I'm about to eat or go to work right. or something. Right or when I need to be, you got to be in a good right I need to be happy. mindset. Yeah, the right mindset. Oh, it's like uh, at 6 o'clock in the morning when I'm, I got my show at 7. And I'm just getting my shit down, <clears throat> trying to be funny. Like I get up, like I'm, I'm, uh, I feel like shit, but you got to perform. Mm-hmm. And Andy will send me a, um, you know, a message from a psycho <laughs> bashing me I'm like, who is this guy you gotta fire him fire me <laughs> who is this guy he doesn't even like hockey <laughs> well i played you moron god I that that, that rattles you. me but if you're gonna fact check me goddamn That's right fine. let's go Dude, we good. talk about all kinds of stuff man it's, it's 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 always moving it's yes. always in motion. always moving we're always, in, always motion. in motion always in motion so i don't know where i went wrong well, on that one i don't know i'm but just I li- telling you i don't I, i'm not mad at him but he can go fuck himself. This is my source. Out but of did he chir- was he chirping me like I don't know what I'm talking no, about? Well, maybe. I get a lot of those. Like you'll get like countries wrong and like animals. Like dude, we're talking a billion things over. You get nothing right. Mm. You can't even keep up with my conversation, dude. You can't even keep up with it. So yeah, like we're talking about animal. This country, yeah, I'll fuck up once in a he, while. He also actually pointed out that then why I, you that listening? I do ask the questions. Then that why people you people want to know the answer to? To what? How many times they go down there a year? Okay. Well, it's not Jesus. 50. No, you ask stupid Let's questions. get to Johnny Gibson. Okay. Yoink, you're going to be all right over there. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm sweating my ass off. I, I know. We're, we're in a hey, sauna listen, right now. I'm, hey, I'm, now I'm starting to get pissed. The power had been out. I don't think there's now been I'm any starting to get pissed. air conditioning. Now I'm sweating even more. So, again, listen, I, I, I want to create, like, a fact check hotline for people. Reach out to yeah. me. If you hear Cam say anything that's inaccurate. Go ahead. Fact check. That's that's fact, healthy. Fact check. Listen, because like that's he, healthy. he has said like wrong country. I get a number of people I, I, dude, a, who are fact checking. Dude, I, this is all. We, we're trying to entertain people. What I read and what I'm into. Sometimes I. So I he's from a, Saskatchewan, I, I, and he called. Well, he can go fuck himself. Okay. <laughs> Why? Because he. I do. I wasn't wrong on that. Yes, I never. You were. No, I was not. No, I wasn't. I did my research on all that, so it's all good. I love you still. It's all good. But fact check the He's shit out of me. driving a course. truck in Saskatchewan. Dude, we got to entertain people. There's a sub that went down. I did my homework on it. Maybe I fucked up a couple things on it. There's a well, lot that goes on. You don't know shit. You can't even keep up with the conversation <laughs> unless we're talking hockey. So I'm talking to myself. That's, fact check me. That That's all not good. True. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to. I, I'm, I'm just. I'm just telling you what I'm reading. I may have to bring them on. Like uh, God damn. As, as a as the head of fact. Sorry. You want, what do you want to do? You want to talk about more draft picks? No, the fucking sub went down. You better be it's accurate weird. with your information. I'm pretty damn accurate. Now, there's sometimes you get, you, 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 fact check me. That's healthy. Fact check You it. want that. Yeah. We all want that. We're yeah. all listening together. They're all yeah. listening to us. We're entertaining them. Well, sometimes you get wrong, get it wrong. You better have your info right. Well, I know. That's why, but on the other you hand, sometimes. You are sweating. You, I'm, st- it's hot in here, man. <laughs> Fuck. There's like no Fucking power hot. in this building. Oh, God. Let's get to Johnny Gibson. Yeah, dude. Okay. Let's go. Brought to you by Hair Club and HairClub.com, Cam. Talk about that pill. I'll talk about the, the talk about a lot of things with Hair Club. 
you just have to go in there and, and get a consultation to set it up and walk in there. Everybody that works there understands about hair loss. What you're going through. Either the women, the men, they are so sweet, especially here in Hans, dude. They are the sweetest people in the world. They'll cut your hair. They have all kinds of different shampoos that help your hair grow. They got different uh, surgeries that you could do. Mm -hmm. You could do uh, uh, PRP treatment. There's a ton of shit. Yes. You just have to set up a, 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 a consultation and talk to people. Walk in the fucking door. It's the easiest thing in the world. That's the hardest part is walking in. And once you're in there, dude, they're so nice. Like, I, I high-five everybody. I make a coffee. I'm like, what's Okay, that? they what's don't that? have time for all that. They I'm just high-fiving people. No, because I high-five people. <laughs> they're happy that I'm there. They're like, oh, here, here's the guy. He got everything wrong about the submarines. No, I didn't. You know? What did I get wrong? Maybe well, one thing. What, what was it? What, what he said. My what fact, he said. My fact checker. Saskatchewan, boy. <laughs> get on with yourself. Or I'll have fucking hey, my a, shit kickers go a, take care of you. He's a shit kicker out there. Uh, well, I'll have Stevie McIntyre come talk to you, boy. So get on with yourself. He, he had some comments, too, about you, too, Stevie. Stevie? Mac. Yeah, I think oh, he said he something. No, he, he, yeah, he acts like he's <laughs> friends with everybody. They're friends with me, <laughs> not him. With me. Like, you could relate to Andy. You relate to me. <laughs> God damn. Um, we have a uh, a platform, though, where you can book your consultation at Hair Club Cam, if you remember. Uh, camastrick.com. Our hair, sorry, sorry about that. Hairclub.com slash camastrick. Yeah, it's easy. Hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. Book your consultation from there. You're going to save hundreds of dollars off your first consultation. Yes, get going. Get you're going. At, you're staring at yourself in the mirror. Yes. You're like, God, my hair is falling out. Help but that's me. okay. Help us on the it's way. okay. I know it's tough to talk to girls when you know your hair is... I, not I for me. It. You're not talking to girls, dude. <laughs> you, you talk to one girl and you wheeled her and now you're married with three kids. John Gibson has been with... He, he married like his like grade school sweetheart. That doesn't mean they were dating the whole time. Because Kate and I no. knew each other in high school, but we didn't. But could you, I would, it'd be interesting, like, and I, I'm sure a lot of people out there are in a relationship with somebody they met at, like, in their 40s. Never knew oh, yeah. them before that. No, no. So you're trying to, like, explain, like, who you are and all your previous life and everything you've been through. It, it is good to have, you know, to, to have a spouse. Can I say Who kind of knew you back in the day, although oh, yeah. I didn't meet my wife till I was almost 30, you know. Yeah, no, I, I get that. And, and and you did great with that. And you got a lovely family. I, I felt bad for my dad the other day. Oh, no, did she break up with him? No, but I don't put up with anything when it comes to women, when it comes to, like, embarrassing me or, mm -hmm. like, talking to other guys. When you're, But I think my dad was talking to this woman, and she's... Who he, who he met in the park. He met in the park, and she kind of came up to him. Mm-hmm. And they, they went to a restaurant together. Okay. And she's taught every guy in the whole bar knew who she was. Oh, okay. And my dad's like, and he's like, hey, how are you? Like, oh, you're with Denny. My dad, my dad literally left. He left her there. He kind of, he just left. What do you mean? Well, just like, like she's Houdini? Talk, she's talking to everybody and stuff. And he's like, I, got, I just got to get going. And he just, and he left. And I, and he called me. He's like, I, I don't know if I'm going to hang out with her anymore. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And I was like, cry, I cried. Oh, why? Because it pissed me off. What you're taking you advantage off. of my dad, like you're like, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go talk to all these. Look, I know all these guys. My dad's just like so yeah, embarrassed. No, their, no, 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 no. They're like 60s. I don't care. I know how that game is. You could be in your 60s. You can be in your 20s. When a woman does that to you, mm -hmm. and hey, look, I know you. Uh, uh, and my dad's just like, oh god, I'm so embarrassed. Like, it's so bad. For maybe him. he she, doesn't know what he's doing. Maybe she's just he's so social. out of touch. <sighs> he's so out of touch. It just. It just embarrassed him. But and, the way and, and, you and, 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 described Eureka is that like everybody knows everybody. everybody. Knows her. Exactly. So what's the like? Why it just it? was it just he doesn't want that. He wants to hide. He walks into this bar, a restaurant, and like she just knows every fucking mm -hmm. dude there, every swinging dick at the bar, drinking every day at the bar. You know all these guys, and you you hung out. My dad's oh, just like, not the employees at the bar, no, not the guy behind no, the counter, no, Andy. the people, the patrons. Yes, and I've seen this with women too. Like, hey, look, I'm gonna look. I know all the guys. Like, no, get the fuck away from me. Yeah. And my dad called me. I go, don't don't worry about it. So he's like, I, I can't hang out with her anymore. I go, it's all yeah, good. Yeah, well, that's you learn. It's you all learn. good. It's the first time he's ever like it made me kind yeah. of cry though. Oh my god, it kind of did. I'm just you should have called me. I worry about him so much. Like he's so he doesn't know what to do. He's got people coming up to him, and I just. I, he's just so out of touch when it comes to that stuff. And well, I think, it doesn't sound like I he's think, that out of touch. He figured it out, he and he got out of the I situation. Know. He called me. He didn't want to be in. I know. And it just, so I like it, how he handled it. It made me cry a little bit. Well, I, I, I hope I, you're I, just, right. I, I love him so much, and I, I can't. I don't want some fucking bitch. 
taking advantage. I don't know. You no, can I, don't say, give a shit. I don't know if you can no, say that in this fuck. situation. I don't okay? give a fuck. You're messing with my daddy, and I don't play that fucking game, man. Mm-hmm. And I know exactly what the fuck you did, woman. I know exactly what you did, and I don't like it. Well, listen, he, 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 he got through it. You know, like that that situation. Now, 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 now he knows. I just don't, I don't well, like it. You care, I don't put you up care with that shit. Dad, with, I never have when I was young. Yes. If a girl didn't wasn't interested in me, I wouldn't be like, hey, help me. I want you. No, I'd be like, get the fuck you know away from me. You tell your dad, get the fuck you know, away from you me. You want to know what you should tell your dad to start doing? Get some first form. Yeah. Get no, some, he is. Get some of those energy drinks. No, he is. Get the fruits and the greens. Start taking the heart medicine, you all know. the different pills to make sure that you are healthy. I know. You are feeling good. You're mentally where you want to be and you're physically where you want to be. He does. Very he few great. companies can take care of you, both on the mental side and the physical side. So download that app today and get a life coach, essentially, and have somebody help you steer your life in the right direction, Cam. I know. They got it, they got it going, man. And um, all you got to do is look at their website. They'll teach you everything. They'll teach you how to work out. They'll show you what to do. Like, they'll keep you so organized. Like, it's the best thing going. That's on the app, yeah. Yeah, on yeah. the app. That's what yeah. you said. It's a website, yeah. Okay. <laughs> And, and, and so they'll keep you organized and stuff. It's hard if you don't know how to work out. Like, mm-hmm. uh, let me give you an example. Uh, let's see, Andy. <laughs> um, Andy could actually go and work out because yes. he'll know what to do. Andy, whenever we worked out, me and Patty, Maroon, and all the shit kickers in St. Louis, when we're all doing, Andy would come work out with us, and I'd watch him. And he'd just stare at us the whole time. And I'd be like, okay, do something. Not, and you wouldn't even do it. Uh, like, you don't like, know what you're doing. Shoot, I was shooting You didn't shit know what you were doing. Everybody. I know. Cause that, you went there for a social event. We're kicking <laughs> ass and taking names, and you're in there talking to us about shit. So it just, if you're like Andy, and you know what the fuck you're doing, mm-hmm. they will teach you everything. It's so organized. Yes. First form. We love them. Uh, firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. Now, this is crucial. Anything you order from First Form, you order... Off our page, our link, firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. If you forget the link, message us, or you can find it on any of our social channels all over, firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. Yep, easy peasy, baby. That is the link. Damn right. Help us out with that, too, all these guys. So we got to keep this thing going. I'm thinking about having a peanut butter lover's bar when I get out of here, Cam. I have never seen you eat one thing in my life. <laughs> Andy, Andy, have you eaten anything today? Not yet. I know you haven't. It's 12 o'clock, dude. That's when I start eating after 12 noon. Yeah. It's working. Is it? <laughs> No, it is, because you look young, man, and you're not heavy or anything, but you're not strong. You don't look like an athlete or anything, but you look healthy. You 100% look healthy. You look more healthy than I do, 100%. I feel like I may live into my right. hundreds. I hope I live long enough to where Kate's not lonely. Mm. You know, I just don't want to. I always talk about the heaven thing with Titanic and Rose and Jack. Okay, stop depressing no, but yourself. I know, but like Jesus. it's like she's married for thirty years after that, forty years, and she's right when she gets to heaven, she hangs out with that a, was a true, swinging that, fucking dick. That was a true story, by the way. No, that really did. There were so many true things. Yes, that there were on that dude. Lots you things. don't think there's a love, little love connection? I that think happened? there was a connection with this latest thing too. That, I talked about yeah, that. Yeah, you did. Okay. So tell Saskatchewan boy <laughs> to go fuck himself. You're probably wrong about that. No, too. I wasn't. The lady Shaq. Uh, uh, God, what's his fucking name? Yeah. William Shatner? Sh- no, Shackleton. No. Stockton Rush, his wife, mm. her aunts, her, her great great grandparents mm-hmm. had a l- love connection on Titanic that <clears throat> that um that they use in the movie because she wouldn't go. Here's what I would do, just so all y'all know. If I was sinking, like I would not want Kate to die with me. Sinking? If I was on the Titanic in 1912 and Kate was able to get on and like I, and she'd be like, no, no, I take her and yeah. I'd pick her up and I put her on there. I'm like, you stay there. I will survive. I will figure out a way. You survive first. I will, mm-hmm. I will find a way, as a man, because we can't get on those things because we're men and we have to stay. I will survive. I'll find you. Let me take care of. Can that. I give some people some advice and a very serious note? Yeah, be careful with the fireworks, dude. Oh, God, yeah, dude. Because you'll blow that thumb off, dude. Uh, you'll start a forest fire. Or you just That's the most fire. hardcore thing. Don't start a forest fire <laughs> just by be being careful. a fucking Hoosier. I'm just telling you. Don't be a Hoosier. Don't start a goddamn... Because I'm lighting some fireworks Thank off. God it rained here, because I know all these good old boys down yonder yeah. by me. They're going to be that's, setting off That's what shit. Cam has by his house, a bunch of, like, firework stands. I saw them all yeah, on the way down there. because it's Franklin it's County. Yeah, down there. It's Franklin County. In my neighborhood, they may... No, because you're in fucking... Nerdville, Creve Corps. <laughs> Somebody, everybody, yeah, everybody me, thinks the same. Sends me messages with uh, 
stuff that he's making Andy from, uh, in the wind from, with my, from my neighbor's garden, he, what he's cooking from my You neighbor's know how cool garden. my neighbors are compared to yours. Like, you see it when you come over. I have some cool neighbors. Though. I bet you do. I bet they're fun. I bet they're fun. Andy you know comes, I... comes over to my house and, like, all my neighbors are, like, my age and cool and fucking. We party and we put up flags on our shit. Andy's neighbors. Dude, I like, never. I bet yours are such you No, know, I never knew that if you put a pineapple outside your door. Oh, you want to get What fucked. that means. Yeah, no, it's so upside down. my wife and I show up at the party the other day, and her swim bag had pineapples on it. And everyone's giving me shit the whole day about it. I'm like, yeah. I didn't even know about this. As I told her, you can't you can't bring that bag ever again to a, to anything to the pool. It's a pool bag. No, she knows what she's doing. No, she didn't no, know. She knows no, she doing. didn't know. Why would you pick out a pineapple bag? Well, she if like you don't laughing that. I think she had heard of it. I, I wasn't familiar with. Oh, no, Kate and I will get recruited everywhere we go. When really? It comes to that. Yes. And you oh, would, they you recruit would, you. Yes, you and your girl would too. If we all went to Lincoln Ozarks this weekend mm-hmm. and we're partying with the big boys, we get on recruited. It, Oh yeah. Oh, we'll get recruited, and I'm like, I ain't doing. I nothing. got a story for you. So you old from the, the six year old man that has a thirty year old wife wants no. to bang my wife. Just Are you wait, out of your just fuck? Wait mind? till the story I have for you. You just wait. Well, go. I can't tell it on the phone. Oh, gee, what a waste, Andy. Your stories aren't good anyway. So I, I don't new even... sponsor alert, Cam. Yeah, Illinois Recovery Center. Yes, IRC baby, my boy, Chris is Bravo. the new premier inpatient substance abuse facility. Oh. God in Illinois. Illinois, it's just outside of St. Louis. It's Swansea, Illinois. I was there the other day mm-hmm. for their grand opening, and I talked to everybody. And it's so weird. They they took this whole, this 10-acre lot, and they redid it, and they made it so fucking nice. Mm. I've been to these facilities before, and it was Some hell. Some of them are shitty. It huh? was, God, are you kidding? I slept on a fucking cardboard box for four days straight. With nothing on the wall, no blanket, nothing, so what's, no pillow, so what's nothing. The Illinois Recovery Center. This look thing like? is paradise. Really, the, the beds are nicer than my bed at home. Really, and it, you have greenery. I couldn't even look. They had no windows where I was. Wow, oh, you're in a fucking prison. Yeah. This place, you can look out the window and see grass and meadows and stuff. It just makes you happy there. It makes you happy. I went there and I talked to everybody. And I knew so many people that I grew up with. Just so you know, Andy, mm-hmm. I grew up with a lot of these cats. And they're like, Cam, I go, what's up? He goes, I know, I went to a jam. I just want to support everybody, just checking this out. My cousin's fucked up. And we got I knew so many people. It's, it's, it, it was so packed with people right there. Like, it's crazy. They have a, such a nice facility. Chrissy Pondoff, you're the man, dude. You went through hell and back with cocaine and drugs and fucking booze. And now and he's his daddy personally died. on the ground he helping is the, these guys. He is the motherfucker, dude. He yeah. is the best of the best. Chrissy Pondoff right there, baby. Let's go. All right, so when it comes to the disease of addiction, like the reality is like getting help should not be difficult. No, oh, man. It should and not it be is. difficult. So the, here's the deal. The Illinois Recovery Center. Here's their mission, all right? It's to be the receiving hand when someone is seeking help. help you, so whether you need help, whether you know someone that needs help, these are the people to reach out to. And it doesn't matter where you are, man. You can be in Saskatchewan. Doesn't matter. You can come from anywhere. Mm-hmm. It does not matter. The and Illinois Recovery Center, Cam, delivers a comprehensive system of care that welcomes both the individual struggling and listen, the family, too. Chrissy will take care of you. He ain't going to have an empty bed, mm-hmm. just so you know. Mm-hmm. So if you can't afford it, they'll take care of you. That's true, too. They are. They. It's not about fucking money grab. Mm-hmm. It's nothing like that. If you don't got the coin, like, they'll work with you on it. There's not going to be an empty bed in that muck. Mm-hmm. You got me on that? And let me tell you this, because there's a couple of individuals that, that are kind of, like, heading this this whole center up. You know, Chrissy obviously being one of them. Yes. Eric being another Eric, one. we're going to deal with him. If you needed to get in touch with them personally, dude, dude we can hook you up they with that as well. They will talk to you and so, explain everything. Yes. Yeah, so if you are someone you know, and if you want to learn about the Illinois Recovery Center, please call 888 888- Four seven two nine five five nine eight 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 four seven two nine five five nine. You can always email them to info at Illinois Recovery Center dot com. Check them hey. out. Great to have them on board. Oh. They're here to help you, man, and we're here to help oh, you, you know, steer you in the direction yes. where you can get in touch. You with know, them. you're listening to me right now. You know, I've been through hell and back. These guys will take care of you. I don't give a fuck if it's your daddy, your mama, your daughter, your son, your cousin. Mm-hmm. These people will take care of you. I'm telling you that right now. Mm-hmm. Get it going and co- talk to them, and they'll set up a plan for you. Right. I swear to God, you got to do it. All y'all out there, you know what I'm talking about. God dang! Uh, we had some crazy storms this past weekend, Kim. Oh, 
God, yeah, we did, dude. A lot of people have no power. I am sweating so bad right now, dudes. I am soaked. Two swinging dicks next to me in this fucking... Where, where, are we in a sauna? I got these... I, I, it's, it's actually I'm good miserable. for you to be in a sauna. Oh, I'm in a soaked. Oh, God. You know it can be good for you? Test on roofing. These are the people to call. If you're affected by storm damage, Fuck man, yeah. if you had some roof damage, siding damage, hail damage... I, I I was I was in the car during a tornado, man. I mm. saw firsthand exactly what happens. The kids throwing up at the same time. Jesus, uh, all over Ivy's favorite stuffed animal, oh. her watermelon. Oh, baby Ivy. Yeah, I know. I love it. It was so just an absolute disaster so situation. All I could do was laugh at the time, though. It was just like one of those things. Like, what are you going to do, man? It's like you're all right. You know, three one four nine three two ten forty two. Though that's the number for Tess on roofing. Now you call Brett. Uh, test on today. You can ask about the, you know, greener rejuvenator shingles and how it, you know, puts those essential oils back into yes. the shingles because they dry out. They can brittle. It gives you an extra five years of lifespan. You can do that. Hey, Brett. But I want all y'all, if you had any, like, storm damage, you need a free estimate. You need someone to get out there now. You see Who Brett? knows what they're doing, who's a preferred contractor with all the major insurance companies you call Brett Tesla. Yeah, we see Brett. He didn't. Um, Shit kicker. He didn't draft you. No, somebody outbid him. Mm -hmm. They outbid him. So I was supposed to get drafted. I was second overall mm -hmm. next to a pro golfer, of course. Mm -hmm. And then I'm the shittiest golfer in the whole thing. And I get picked second overall. I didn't know that another guy was going to uh, outbid Brett. And and then guess what happened? What happened? They go, who should we pick? I go, pick Timmy Peel. And they picked Timmy Peel. And, and guess they won, who won the whole thing. They won the whole thing. Yeah. Which. May have cheated. I had. May have cheated. No, don't say that because that. You don't, okay. Well, no, whatever. no, no, because okay. when you're in golf tournaments, you don't want to, like, say. <laughs> so Sorry. You, Take no. it out. No, no, no. I'm joking. No, I know. But you don't want, you don't want to have that, like, remember. Perception. Soupy and my boy Mike. Well, he cheated for sure. Of course. And then, like, <laughs> now you're caught in that mix. Well, so these guys Soupy ain't. Soupy 100% cheated. But I had college golfers on my team. Mm -hmm. They were so good. Really? And we're at 1,400. You lost? And we're like, we got to win this thing. And Timmy Peel and, and big old Brett. They won that mug, and I'm just looking at Peelzy. I'm just looking at Peelzy. Um, you hear me out there, Peelzy. I know you listen. I'm just looking at you. Hey, I'm looking at you. May have cheated. Not uh, Brett. Peelzy might have kicked the ball a couple fucking yards ahead. Maybe he did something. But, uh, no, it's all good, man. We love everybody, dude. Dude, I, they're, they're the coolest, and there's shit-kicking storms coming around, too. Call them and get your shit done. Yes. There's shit-kicking storms coming, dude. Tessonroofing.com. Tessonroofing.com. Tell Brett Tesson we sent you. Uh, Cam, kicker. at Bellman Automotive, you get no what? Swinging dicks. You know, you don't get swinging dicks. You don't. God, you what know a what you do nightmare get. that is. You know what you do get? Automatically. You get good quality. Qu qualified. Cars. You qualify. What? You qualify. Man, you go there and people are that, nice. No, 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 that's what you get. I you, don't know what you you're talking about. Well, if your credit's shitty, you qualify. Oh, yeah, okay. Your credit's shitty. They'll take care of you. But, like, no one's swinging their dick out there and fucking creeping out your wife. No, they're giving you sushi and flavored they're, water. No, they don't do that either. That's stupid. No, that's that's a stupid, stupid thing to say. It's true. I'm just telling you. No one's eating sushi at a goddamn car dealership. Although, I'm going to get some today. I'm not going to lie to you. Sushi? You're not barbecuing today? No, I got to go to a barbecue I'm party later of, on. The sushi on the Cape Cod is going to be... Uh, be damn good. Damn good. Hell yeah. Anything on the East Coast, food-wise, yes. is damn good, mm. boy. Damn good food. Um, Buick GMC on one side of the street. Cam's looking at that Buick Enclave. Nothing wrong with that. No judging whatsoever. It's all good, it's actually man. A beautiful like car. A Cadillac. Captain's seats on the inside. Cheaper. Frosted white tan leather. Cam's looking at. Uh, they got all the GMCs, man. We all know what GMC brings to the table. Oh, they got right? Denali's and Other shit. side of the street, right across the street, you can literally just toss a rock over there. You yeah, got Chrysler, do Chrysler Dodge <laughs> Jeep that. Ram. Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. You got everything. You think about all the selection, man. Get yourself a new ride in time for the upcoming fall, which is going to be here before you be know here it. soon, baby. You know we're going to get through summer, going to cruise through summer. Get yourself the perfect ride that fits your lifestyle. You're gosh dang right. You know, do that and do that today. Plus, Dan Bellman's the best man. Say hi to Danny, boy. He's our OG sponsor, baby. Say hi to Danny. Danny, what up, homeboy? And Kenny. God damn. Kenny, what's up? And Dale. Hey, Dale. How are you? What's good? What's good with you? <laughs> what's good for you, I'll Dale? tell you what's good with Johnny Gibson, man. Yeah, he's cool as I shit. I kind of hope he gets traded. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I, like, I, I, can I we get he, him out of there, please? Yeah, I, I'd say get him the fuck. I know, and uh, I know, unless that Leo Carlson is going to I And I know, I know Pat Verbeek, man. He probably would love to trade him, too. Get out from underneath that contract, but I he can't it. give him away. 
can't. You got to get some like real, you know, know, house jersey assets get you, get, in return. But nobody has any cap don't space. Any fucking money, dude. You got no money. Get him out of there. I want to see Johnny Gibson play for like a, a good team. I agree with that. It's been a long time since we can said that. He's a damn good uh, great goalie. conversation though with Johnny Gibson, NHL goalie joins us now on the Chemistry Podcast. Hairclub.com, baby. Oh, you're damn right. Go to our landing page today, hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. Regrow, restore, and replace that hair. Don't wait. Now to the interview. What Yay. up? What up? <laughs> hey, so how you doing? Break Pittsburgh down for yeah. us. Like, I mean, how many guys have come out of Pittsburgh? We got Brandon Saad here in St. Louis, actually. He's a Pittsburgh he boy. Yeah. Interesting. So who yeah, else we- Who else is out of there? Actually, I think I think this is the first summer Brandon saw it. I think he moved to Utah with his uh, family, but we have a pretty good group. It's usually, uh, as far as NHL guys, it's me, JT Miller, uh, Vince Trocek, and uh, the Cooley that just got drafted by Arizona. And then there's um, we have, we have a lot of other guys. Uh, we used to have Ken Grady, Matt Barkowski. Um, Got a, got a good group of uh, AHL guys, college guys. So we have pretty good skates in the summer. It's fun. So you like, I know you're in Anaheim and you got a place in Pittsburgh. Like, there's a big difference between like the culture of in, in Anaheim and then going back to a Midwest kind of city, kind of blue collar. Like, uh, wh- which city do you like? Do you like more, basically? Um, I mean, it's tough. Uh, Pittsburgh's home for me. I'm born and raised here. My family's here. My wife's from here. So it's always, get, Pittsburgh's always going to be home, but. As far as the last eight, nine years, I mean, we spent most of our time in, in California. We had both of our, our little girls out there. So, I mean, they're, both places are definitely home. California probably feels more like home. Just we spent a lot more time there, like I said, the last 10 years. But Pittsburgh will always, will always be a place for us as well. Were you like a phenom growing up? Yeah. Where they were like, oh, we got this goalie out of Pittsburgh. Everybody, yeah. hey, go watch no, John Gibson. I, uh, Everybody knows who Johnny Gibson is. Didn't make his high school team, or is that the, true? No, it's like the opposite. Okay, no, you really got cut from your high school team. Is this like yeah, Michael I, Jordan trying yeah. out as like an eighth grader and he got cut from varsity, <laughs> or like, it, like what really happened here? Yeah. Um. So I I grew up playing double A hockey. I played one year of triple A hockey when I was pretty young with uh, Vince Trocheck his dad and uh, Riley Barber's dad. There was a few of us kind of started the Pittsburgh uh, Hornets. I played there for one year and then I went to play double A hockey, just played double A hockey in Pittsburgh until I was 15. And then I played one year of triple A, went back to the Pittsburgh Hornets and then I went to the U S program. So growing up, I, I played just a lot of double A hockey for local teams in Pittsburgh and then had the one good year at triple A. Uh, I think it was, under 16, 16 you then, and mm-hmm. then I moved on to the national team. And as far as the high school, I was just, I, I, growing up, I always wanted to play, play for the whatever school I was at. I, I played volleyball and or basketball. Just tried to play uh, any sports I could for my schools growing up. And when I was in ninth grade, I tried out for the hockey team, and I didn't make the varsity. I played one year JV, and then I didn't go back out for the team next year. Yeah, screw that, Coach. Okay? Yeah, really. We're going to write him an email. Hey, hey can you dunk? I, I mean, let us know. Like, we, we need, like, a hockey player who's, like, just an incredible athlete who's, like, put throwing it down. Like, what kind of, like, basketball player were you? Honest. So it was tough. I only played basketball for one year. Like I said, I wanted to play sports for my school. All my buddies played basketball. So I tried it. It was just tough because, as you know, basketball and hockey are during the same same season. So I missed a lot of practices and – I was in grade school then, so basically your playing time was showing up to practice, and if you didn't show up to practice, then you didn't get a lot of playing time. So I didn't get a lot of basketball playing time, and then I switched to playing volleyball for my school because it was in the spring and just played with all my buddies. So I had volleyball. Volleyball is a cool volleyball. sport, Cam. It's a very cool sport, actually. You don't have to tell me. Yeah, I'm just letting you know. I'm letting you know where. I'm letting you know what it is. You played volleyball <laughs> like outside or yeah, just I, like in the gym or something. No, it's just uh, just for my school. Uh, I, I grew up so playing from grade five, I think five, six, seventh, and eighth. Just played with my buddies, indoor volleyball, just for our school, just something to do, have fun with my friends. And we were, back then, I mean, we were all athletic. I was taller, so I was able to play at the net, and some of my other buddies. It was just something to do with my friends and travel some tournaments and 
have fun. Yeah, I play a little volleyball back in my you, day. You're a terrible yeah, volleyball no, I play a little volleyball. Hey, <laughs> hey, you should you should have gone to like Central Catholic High School and been like the quarterback. You know, I got all the, like where Dan Marino and all the legends came yes. out of Pittsburgh. Like, why weren't you going yeah, that, there, huh? That's the only sport I never played. I, I never played football. I just, I mean, football and basketball were tough because it's all during the hockey season. I, like I said, I tried basketball the one year and it was just, it was too much with, with hockey. I was missing it all the time. So I just stuck to uh, hockey and baseball as I got older. Football is boring to play, man. Like, I love watching no, it's it. Yes, it. it is. They tell you what to do. Like, hockey is so much more like, you just like, you can go create things on the ice where football is like, hey, run this line, and then the ball might come <laughs> yeah. to you, and you might yeah. die yeah. because that's, at 300 points. Don't, don't ever let Cam be your offensive uh, coordinator, no, okay? Sh- well, it's just it's a boring sport. <laughs> hey, so when you were growing up, were you like, a, 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 I guess, a Penguins fan? I know your boy. Yeah. You're, go ahead. Yeah, I grew up. Um, so my dad was a basketball player, but he always, uh, he always went to the Penguin games. He was always watching them on TV. So I just kind of grew up watching the Penguins. Either he would take me to some games or – just watching them in the living room when I was younger and I was always into the games and just kind of had a stick and a ball and hit it around the room. And yeah, that's how I got started. My dad was a hockey fan. He never played. And I kind of took a liking to it just through watching it. And it got me started with skates and just kind of one thing just kept, kept leading to another. And I got really into it and obviously stuck with it. Well, yeah, Goaltending so much. It's like crazy to me. Like, I, I I don't know who's good, who's not good. It's like there's somebody you've never even heard of who, like, you know, comes in and goes on an unbelievable run. The like, there's only a handful of you guys that can actually, like, play in the NHL. There's two on every team, you know? Like, like Aiden Hill all of a sudden goes on this run. People didn't really know much about Aiden Hill before the playoffs. Like, what is it about goalies and that position that it's, like, become, like, so unpredictable? I mean, I, I've, I've kind of said it when I was younger and that in the, I would always get asked what I want to work on and, and what I want to focus on. And I always said it, it's not easy, but you can have a good game here and there. And I, I think the biggest thing for, for goalies in, in any sport is consistency. I mean, I, I think if you have a, if you put it over a 10 game stretch and you have one or two good games that most good and, and high athletes can do that. But I think to set yourself apart you, you look at a 10 game window like you got to be able to bring your a game eight nine out of ten and then those one or two games you got to find a way to even if you're not feeling it or feeling your best to find a way to, to do your job keep the fuck out of the net and i think the biggest thing that sets the, the average from the best or the, or the elite from the good is, is just being consistent and having having that level of consistency to your game night in and night out are you one of those weird goalies, though, like superstitious, like don't talk to anybody before the game? <laughs> hey, don't talk to Gibby. Like, you can't look at him. Like, are you are you one of those guys? Or are you just like, no, I'm going to go do my shit? No, I've always been laid back. I mean, I've, it, it, I've, I've been asked that question hundreds of times. And, I mean, I think everybody has, has a routine that they like to do that works for them throughout the year as far as warm-up or, or stretching and, and all that. So, I mean – you could say you're superstitious, but I, I think for me, it's just more of a routine that I like to follow. But no, compared to other people, I'm just, I'm, I, I stay pretty loose. Obviously, I like to get focused and like I said, have my warm up routine and, and all that. But I'm pretty laid back. Just go with the flow and go out and do my job. Gibby, this would be the most difficult part for me if I was a goalie is like cheering for your goaltending partner like when he goes into oh, the game yeah. like hey i hope you pitch a <laughs> shutout today i, I hope you get, i want you to take my job i hope you get to start tomorrow night too and play the next <laughs> oh, fucking shit. three weeks you know it's like it's uh how do you how do you handle that you know like just in terms of like you gotta you gotta get along with your with your tandem right goalies they yeah, always I, mean, to, I, you know? I think it's a yeah i think it's just you develop a friendship and then it's one of those things you just kind of push each other and and you feed off each other and you, you try to make each other better and and whether it's you work with somebody your age or older or younger that's been in the league or hasn't been in the league, I mean, you, everyone's always learning, and you, and you try and pick up other things or, or tips or anything you can to try and give yourself that extra 1%. So I think it's just, I mean, you ask anybody, I think the b- biggest thing is having that relationship, that friendship, that, that you're rooting for each other and, and pushing each other to keep getting better. Unless it's like Ed Bell for uh, he's like, Eagle, he's like, I'm not sharing anything uh-uh. with you. Uh-uh. <laughs> Tom Barrasso, you ever meet him in Pittsburgh? I didn't. Uh, so I don't think I ever met him, but I, I mean, I, I obviously, I know who Tom Barrasso is when I was younger growing up. He was obviously the goalie and yeah. 
I, I remember watching him play, but I, I don't think I ever had the chance to meet him, though. No. Yeah. What a cool thing for you. Okay, so you kind of grow up. And would you, were you born in 93? Were you born in 93? 93. Yeah. So you, I, I, so you still got to kind of grow up with Mario and Yogs. And then the team kind of goes through a shit for like four or five years. And then you get Crosby and Malkin. Like, as a fan, are you like, wow, we, we got a pretty good here. Now you got a new building and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, when Crosby came on the scene, we're like, holy shit, this is incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was definitely cool. It was, it, was, it was awesome growing up here. Like, I remember, obviously, when I was younger, watching Mario and, and those teams. And then I'll never forget, my dad took me to the game where Mario first came back out of his retirement. Yeah. And that, was, that was awesome. Right. And then, obviously, the whole hype around Crosby and Malkin. And I mean, they did a, they did a ton for the city. I mean, bringing in the Stanley the, that Stanley Cup they had did a lot for the city. Or, like you said, have, bringing in a new rink and having that new rink brings in so many things. Whether it's college basketball, Frozen Four concerts. I mean, definitely what what they've done to the city of Pittsburgh and and changed it. It's it's really cool to see and just how it evolved from like you said when he got when Mario was here to having Crosby and, and those three guys get drafted and what they did for the, for the city. And now they have the new arena downtown. They have the great practice facilities. So it's, it's cool to see how everything changed from when I was growing up to, to where everything is now. Hey, how did you go from like playing double a hockey to all of a sudden, like a year later, go into the USA yeah. program? I mean, like, like who, who found you? Like who spotted you and was like, wow, this kid's got some, potential like where they just like happen to be like watching the double a tournaments too <laughs> at the same time like so, how'd they find you honestly, so i think it it was one of those things where i played triple a when i was young and then they and then every team started carrying two goalies and i went to double a just because uh for one it was a little closer for my parents for driving and, and their commuting and then for two it was they they only they only had one goalie so i was i was able to play all the games and for me and my development, it was, it was obviously great. I was playing all the games, I was, the tournaments. Sometimes I was playing two, three games a day. So I was having fun with that. And then it was one of those things where the I think it was under 16. I, I didn't know what the U.S. program was. I was just – we talked about it, and I, I, I kind of made the decision that I didn't want to play baseball anymore. I wanted to go full force with hockey. And then my parents, we talked about it and tried out for the AAA team that year and obviously made that team and then had, had a good year. And I don't really know how the whole, I don't really remember how the whole scouting and everything came, but I remember I got the invitation to go to the U S uh, tryout and super excited. Didn't really know a whole lot about it, but went and it was a great experience and I was lucky enough to be picked and, that was a huge part of my career that spending the two years there and having all that development and it played a huge role in helping me get where I am today. So who's on that team? And like, what's the difference when you, when you play for the U S team, like is everything like first class, like the facility you're wearing the USA on your, on your, on your chest, man. Like that's a, that's a pretty cool feeling. Yeah. I mean, it was awesome. So it's different now. I think now they're out of Plymouth, but when I was there, it was out of Ann Arbor. We were playing out the ice cube. I mean, we had a really good team. I mean, we had, um, I'm trying to think of who all was on our team. Our second year we had, uh, we had a few call-ups like we had Seth Jones and Jacob Truba as our defenseman oh. called up from the 94 birth year. Ooh. And then our defense, we had Jake McCabe, Connor Murphy, um, trying to think our one world juniors we won we had like my um johnny Gaudreau, and trocek jt miller rocco grimaldi like truba. i said uh, truba goss's beer damn i know yeah. hey, guys, we, I mean, hey was truba was truba just crushing killing, guys <laughs> was truba fucking killing guys back then yeah I mean, he was he was kind of always the same player i mean he was he was always strong he liked to hit and he always had the heavy slap shot. So, I mean, he, I think his, his first year there, he, which was then our second, he played probably 75, 80, both of them played almost the whole year with us. And they were some of our best defensemen. So you knew at a young age that they were going to be good players in the NHL and they were going to be, be successful. Hey, who's that baby in the background? You, you've got kids or what? I'm sorry, say it again. How many kids do you have? I hear that baby in the background. Who's how many kids do you have? <laughs> I have uh, two girls, and uh, we have another 
baby coming. Really? Oh, congratulations. Do you know dude. what you're having with the third one? Do you know if it's No, a- we we uh we, we do a surprise for all of them, so Listen, well, I do and, the surprises. Don't even say no, it, no, 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 no. I do the surprises too. I wish you would have hit me up because I I know the he exact how remedy how to have a boy. If you're looking to have one cuz I had two girls too. I've shared it with like what, I think you, I'm thinking I'm like nine for nine. Yeah, but what, what is it, Andy? Because you say this a lot. A thousand percentage. Do you have to have a different position? No, there's just you... ways you do it. I, I, I feel like you're going to end up having that boy, though. I don't know if you want a boy or not, but I just sense it I happening. Mean, yeah, we, I mean, we'd obviously like a boy. Obviously, as long as they're healthy, we don't care. But we, uh, it's nice. Me and my wife both agree. We we like doing the surprises, and we agreed to do it with all. We, we're hoping for four, so. We have two more chances, hopefully. Are you going to be one of those guys that goes into, like, a park and does, a, like, a, a gender reveal, mm. and then that you set the park on fire? <laughs> yes, you're like going to. Yes. Gonna... <laughs> That's not really up my alley. I'm, I'm very fortunate that uh, me and my wife are on the same page of not doing the gender reveals and doing a surprise, so we don't have to worry about doing all that, all that stuff because I've seen a lot of videos, and most of them, most of them end poorly rather than better. Hey, I respect the That's fact true. that you want to be surprised because because my wife and I did the same thing. But you know, like my second kid, the lady she accidentally told us what we were having. Like we went, she did? yeah, <laughs> like no we way. were like, what is going on here? My wife, she's like cursing and like she's not like you know no. she's like in front of like the nurses she's the doctor. Pissed. She's like she's like shit, shit, like like I'm like what? What's going on? So you know they 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 give you like a photograph, you know, after the ultrasound, yeah. you know, and. The lady knew, like, we don't want to know what it is. And she's like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to put it in an envelope for you, blah, blah, blah. So she hands her the picture, and it says right in there, like, it said think pink on it, on the picture. Oh, no. And so we didn't tell anybody, but, like, that's my second one, man. We actually knew what we were having because this this lady – and she's like, oh, in 40 years, I've never done that. I'm like, well. Well, you just did. Well, you just did. Oh, so. Yeah, we, we always go into those. And if, even if I'm not there and my wife, we always make it known that we want it to be a surprise. And we just keep telling them because we, we've heard stories that people slip up or make a mistake. So we try to they go will. in and make, make it known. They yeah. Will. Hey, you made a ton of money. You're going to make even more money. What What do you like to do? In the summertime, like, do you got a lake house? Like, do you have a boat? Like, what do you do? Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty easy going. I mean, we hang out in Pittsburgh in the summer. We, we have a little lake that we go to here. I, I like to fish. I'm not a good golfer. I like to golf with my buddies, but honestly, we just like to hang out in the summer, spend some time with our family. We have a lot of uh, cousins and and, kid, and uh, nephews that are around our kids' age, so just kind of hanging out, whether it's at houses in the backyards, at the pool, or going up to the lake, just trying to spend some family time and get the kids around each other since they only get two or three months of it Johnny, do the you, year. Johnny, do you have, like, 30 exotic cars, like Getzlaff? Like, when he came no, on? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a very simple guy. I don't need a whole lot. I'm uh, I'm not I'm not like crazy into cars. I, I don't really have any any crazy hobbies or anything like that. I'm pretty simple. You give me take me out on a boat or a lake or fish or just golf with my buddies. I'm I'm happy. I get Cause, that because you're a, I get that, you're a Pittsburgh boy. Yeah, dude. Like, you're Midwest though. He, exactly. I mean, kind of. it's yeah. kind of it's kind of East it Coast. Is. It's uh, not really I, Midwest. It's a Midwest feel. Hey, what's that? What's what, what's it like playing with that Zegers man? Like, is he just on at all times? Like, you know, like <laughs> I mean, I listen. One of the best videos. I don't always love the content the NHL puts out. You know, sometimes it's a little corny, you know. Yeah, but when sometimes. He, but when he was the limo chauffeur and he picked you and Troy Terry up from the airport, dude, that's one of the best videos I've ever oh, seen. Oh, yeah. Although, were you like, okay, will you just take us to the damn hotel? Yeah. You got your girl with you. <laughs> yeah. You've been traveling. You're probably tired. And now he's, like, stopping at, like, souvenir shops and stuff like yeah. that. Give me home. You're at, like, a, a church. Like, he's marrying Troy Terry yeah. and his fiance. Uh, yeah, we were surprised. We didn't We didn't know. Um it was, it was fun with just with the whole story because he was getting married that summer and everything. And it was a little long, but he uh, he ended by taking us to McDonald's on the way and, and he bought us some McDonald's. So at oh, least nice. he made up for it. <laughs> How nice of him to buy a seven dollar McDonald's for you. Is he a fun kid yeah. to be around, though, man? Are you like I mean, I know yeah, he like, is. You know. And, and I know a lot of people or not a lot of people, but some people say about all the Instagram stuff and he's doing the videos. But I mean. People don't see him behind the scenes. I mean, he puts in a lot of work on the ice after practice. I mean, maybe 
if he if he does crazy stuff, but I mean that's just him. I mean he he puts in the time to work on his hands, to work on his shot, to to, to try and find those little edges to get better. So, I mean people, I I think some people think that he's maybe doing it for the Instagram and all that stuff, but I mean that that's him. That's his personality. That that's how he finds success. He he's he's creative. He he tries to think outside the box. Maybe make plays that that other people would never think about making and. He can do that. I mean, he practices it. He, he takes pride in it. So I definitely give him a lot of credit. I mean, yeah, no, I'm with like you. I said, man. Some some people try and maybe say it, bash it, and it's not hockey and this and that. But I mean, it's not like he's just going out there blindly, like, oh, I'm going to try this one one day. Hopefully, it works. Like he he's practicing stuff. He he's he's studying film to see what what works, and he, he takes pride in wanting to get better and, and stronger and be the best player you can be. Yeah, no, I think he's great for the I game, man. The kid, you listen, my, I, I got a seven-year-old. He just turned seven who plays, man. They all know who Tro- who uh, Trevor Zegers is, man. So, like, you know, he's a star for the young kids. They like him. Now, is he practicing the Michigan? Is that what he's staying on the ice to do? And has anybody ever scored a Michigan goal on you? Has that ever happened? I think he knows better that he, he wouldn't try it on me in practice because I'd, I'd, I'd come over with my stick and hit him right in the stomach. I but. See, I've no, seen you do it. Damn right. Hey, I've seen you get angry. God I've damn seen right. you get angry. Go, I like it. We got Felino coming on tomorrow, man. I've seen you go after yeah. Felino. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I mean, he he does – he just – he tries stuff. I mean, like like I said, he, he tries stuff just out there goofing around and stuff like that, but he's working on he's working on his hands. He's working on his vision, trying to do stuff. And, yeah, I mean, maybe some stuff doesn't work, and people are like, oh, why do you try that? But, I mean, you can't take – you can't take stuff away from a player that – that's his MO. I mean, he's he's crafty. He's shifty. He's a playmaker. He makes plays. So, you kind of got to take that. I mean, obviously, they're going to fail sometimes, but – if he makes the play seven, eight times out of ten, and and you only have two bad ones, and I think you're going to take that because most times when when he makes those plays, it's going to end up in a great great opportunity or chance to score. All right. So what did you tell him? Remember when he and Troy Terry went into the scrum against Arizona? Oh God! And he was like, "That is our superstar that you're beating up." He was he was like not happy about it. We actually had Pat Verbeek on, and got his take. But like. As a veteran guy, were you like, hey, listen, man, if you're going to go into the scrum, you got to, like, protect yourself? Oh, or were you, like, genuinely pissed that that they got, you know, ragdolled a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely it was definitely tough. I mean, I think that was the year where we kind of had a lot of young guys, didn't really have but maybe the biggest team. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was one of those things where it's kind of a learning experience the hard way about protecting yourself knowing who's on the ice, knowing what you have to do to take care of yourself because in for for like Troy and, and Z and, and those young guys, I mean, they gotta learn that they're gonna have that X on their back. People are gonna be trying to come after them, be physical and and throw them off their game. So they have to learn how to deal with it and just more about knowing who you're on the ice with that uh, if there is a scrum, be aware whether you know you know what I mean, if there's a guy that that's their job to try and get you off their game. Just kind of knowing who you're out there for, knowing, knowing what you have to do, and knowing when to protect yourself, and you know what I mean. Yeah, just, just no, kind I of. Gotcha, hundred percent. Yeah, it's more of just a learning experience. Cause I think that was that was like an opening experience. We never really had that. And when you when you play your, your top line, you have three scorers, playmakers on it that they got to know what they have to do when when things like that happen. So what's uh so okay. In Anaheim, like, how, how's your setup there? Are you by the water? Are you by the ocean? And when you do go out to dinner, like, does, does anybody recognize you? Is it quite nice that no one does? If they do, it's probably not crazy. Like, so tell yeah, me what your setup is. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely it's definitely laid back. I mean, people do, but it's not it's not overboard. Um, we bought a house in uh, Laguna. Just It's a little away from the water. You get a little bit more land and. And that stuff. So, with for us having a family and and having kids, we wanted to have a little more land, have a pool. So we're a little uh, further inland, but we love it. We've been there for the last five years, and that's been our home. I mean, we raised our our two kids there. Um, had a lot of fun times there. It's whether we have guys on the team over and everything like that. It's it's been a really fun fun place for us. And um. Yeah, I mean, we're happy we found it. We weren't, we were kind of looking all over, maybe going to Newport Beach, Laguna Beach, and then we just kind of stumbled upon an area that we found, and 
we knew that was the area we wanted to be in. It was just more about finding the right house and everything worked out. Yeah, no, I love it, man. I do too. I've been up in that area. Oh. I, I, I've, I've had a glass of wine on the cliffs at the Ritz there at the Dana Point. Man. Oh, yeah. It's, it's sick. Hell yeah. And Laguna, it's a beautiful, beautiful drive, man. All right, and just being up on the coast there. So, so how long is the commute? Like for you to get to the practice rink and get to the games and then get home after the games, like how long is it taking you to get there with all the traffic and all that? So it's easy. The uh, practice rink, I guess, there in 12 minutes. Wow. Oh, nice. Super close. And then the uh, for games, I take a toll road. I take 241. So the nice thing is there's really never any traffic because I'm coming in the back way. So I, when I leave, I know that it's going to take me any, usually between 35 and 45 minutes. So it's it's nice for me because obviously California traffic you never know so taking the toll road knowing that regardless of what time I leave it's always going to take me the same amount it's nice so I can't complain the commute the commute the travel not too bad so Hell so no. it's, it's definitely worth it yeah seventy two degrees every single day no, yeah you're, you're the, okay. the top is down you're okay his flow is he's got no, the hair got flowing the hair. I see his hair Andy. oh yeah oh, I, I know you it. see that hey yeah. anybody hang out with any because uh, you're in the mix out there you know like does anybody on the team like you know, there's always a one guy on every team that hangs out with, like, celebrities, you know, mm-hmm. one or two guys. Anybody on your team that's just kind of hanging out with some big dogs? I don't think I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think Orange County is kind of more laid back. I mean, I think you go towards L.A. and stuff, you get a little bit – you get more of that. But I don't think any anybody too big that I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, Shaddy. Shaddy's not bringing like not Dre. He's not bringing Drake into the locker room. <laughs> Shaddy might. Shaddy might hang out with some people. I don't. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He's a good dude. I, I like know. Shaddy a lot, man. Did he yeah, ever? Did he, did he yeah. ever scare you when he was dressed in like a teddy bear or like in a box? You know, when you're doing your autograph signings, like, did you get caught up in that or no? Get caught up in the. Oh no, I I was. Uh, I knew it was happening, so I saw him doing it, and I just kind of watched in, but. He, Chatty's a great guy. He he was uh he was really good for us the last three years, whether it was on the ice or just off the ice, kind of being bringing that veteran role, especially the last two years with having a really young team and a lot of young guys coming in and, and you need the you need to have veteran veteran presence to to help help the kids and you know, just just throughout the growing pains for the year and, and the ups and downs and all that, just to have have people that have been in the league for a while that can help the young guys or, or younger guys get, get through times like that and just to be there for support. And it was just a really, really big role that he played for the last three years. And him and I had a, were pretty close. So it was obviously tough to, tough to see him go, but it's exciting for him to go to Boston and hopefully – find some success there. Yeah, no, he's the best man. He is cool. Yeah, I love Shetty. Hey, um, all right, let's get down to it though. Like being on a losing team, like you're like you're 29, you got your prime years ahead of you, like you're in that window, like you, you know you're widely considered like to be like an elite goaltender yep. in the NHL. Yep. It's hard to have impressive numbers, man, when you're playing on a shitty team. That's like tough to do. So how are you handling that mentally, man, as a goaltender? Like when you're facing like 50 shots, like oh. this guy faced 50 plus shots. Oh. Three different games in one month. Like I mean, some, sometimes goaltenders go an entire career; they never see a game where they face fifty plus shots. So, so how are you handling that, man? It's got to be a little bit stressful, right? Yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely it was a challenging year. I mean, it was it was it was a lot. I mean, it was one of those things where it was, there was a lot of downs, and we were trying to just to find the little things to go up on. But it was a challenging year. I mean, for me, like you said, with the numbers and all that, I mean, you can't really get caught up in that. It was more about I was just trying to go out every night, do my best, and give us a chance to win. I mean, it's you kind of have to change your mentality a little bit because usually you go in, now we try to win every game and all that, and then you kind of just go in, let's keep it close, give them a chance to win, and that's all you can do. I mean, it's, it's a tough way to think and kind of change your mentality, but, I mean, you just kind of got to roll with the punches and try to make the best out of the situation. Now I get you, man. I, I, I completely understand. We play in these, some of these alumni games and no one back checks and I see the goalies like it's hard to get a goalie out there because they're getting ripped apart so fucking bad. Hey, so yeah. when you're chilling though, like what what like you are you into podcasts? Are you into uh you know Game of Thrones? Like what do you like to do on your down? You play the guitar. You play the guitar, you like music, like what like what do you do when you're traveling? Like what do you watch? 
Um, I like TV shows. I kind of, I mean, I don't really have um, something that I'm super into. Whatever, like, the new shows are out. I don't really watch a whole lot of TV shows in the summer. I try to save them for the season on the long road trips or on the airplane. So in the summertime, I don't do a whole lot as far as that. But uh, during the year, yeah, definitely watch TV shows. And then during the season, I mean, we try, like, when we're on the road and stuff, we try, we try and do stuff together. Obviously, now with things getting more back back to normal and COVID passed us, being able to go out to dinners and do stuff on the road, it's kind of refreshing to get back to normal. And during the season, I mean, as far as having, having free time, I mean, right now our kids are getting older, so we're always, feels like we're going one place to another, whether it's swim lessons or or gymnastics i mean we we, seems like we're always doing stuff so it's it's cool though i mean it's fun to to go see your kids grow up and get into sports and our our oldest daughter's doing little like tennis lessons just little stuff like that just going there and and being able to play tennis with her play soccer watch her swim just doing stuff like that it's really exciting for us too hey who's been a partner that you've had like a goaltending partner that you've that you've got that you feel like you've gelled with the best you guys were boys. You guys hung out with, you know, hung out a lot, you know, off the ice too. And just, you know, mutually you guys helped each other. I mean, there's been a lot. I I think as far as like hanging out and everything outside of the rink, my first few years, me and Freddie, because we were kind of coming up, obviously he's, he's a little bit older than me, but we were just coming up, kind of just fighting. I mean, pushing each other. We, we were splitting games, but outside the rink, we were always hanging out. We had a pretty close group, but there was a few, a few other uh, guys on the team were always hanging out, going out to dinner. And then as far as just like a, a mentoring role, obviously I was with Ryan Miller for four or five years and growing up, he was, he was a guy that I looked up to being an American goalie playing for team USA, the Olympics, just, he was an easy guy to look up to and then being able to play with him for four or five years and just learning through him and, Obviously, you have a guy like that just kind of pick their brain. I mean, he's the experience and the knowledge that he has was very, very helpful to me just learning the game and kind of through the ups and the downs. When we were together, we had a few good seasons. And then I think maybe his last year or two, it wasn't as good. So just kind of learning how to deal with the ups and the downs throughout each season and just having him be there to, to – talk to if things weren't going good or just anything like that just having like i said that veteran guy who's been basically in every situation you could imagine that to be there and to want to help you was i was very grateful for that let me ask you this and i like asking goalies this question too so who annoyed you the most not like a guy like oh ov that's going to go down and and, and go bar down on you Not, not necessarily a goal scorer that's that you're that you're worried about him picking corners but like a guy that annoys you like a Steve Odd or a Hornquist or something like Corey who, Perry. Corey Perry, like who <laughs> fucking annoyed um, the shit out of you? Get in your way, bumped you, chirped, all that shit. Matthew. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if I could give one guy. I mean, I know the, there was I think three years in a row where we were in the playoffs and we played Nashville. We were just, we always had a good battle with Nashville. I mean, back I remember. They had like Forsberg, they had Johansson, they had Ribeiro, just all those guys getting in front of the net and then knowing what power plays, you give it to Shea Weber and he's just oh, taking God. slappers at my shoulders and my collarbones in the playoffs. So, I mean, but it was, it was, it was just always, it was good battles. I mean, I think we played them two, two years in a row or three out of four or something like that. So, I mean, we obviously knew each other well and there was a little bit of a rivalry going on. So, and I think most of the series either went six or seven. So we were obviously familiar with each other. So I think just going back, those were, those are some pretty good battles having a few years in the row in the, in the playoffs. You think goalie fights should be a thing, you know, like, listen, we see Jordan Bennington here. Like, you know, he kind of <laughs> snaps a little bit here and there, you know, like, and everybody's like, Oh, maybe just let him fight. Like he and Mark Andre Fleury, yeah, dude. they, they, they the, the, the officials, you know, they didn't even allow them to get into it. I know you've had a couple close ones. You and Phoenix Copley, maybe. I saw you ready, Gibby. You're at the red line. Like, let's yeah, go, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. But, but then that never materialized. Would you like to see the refs just like let the goalies go? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know what the ruling or anything is. I, I don't, I, I don't really know. I mean, I know, I, I know that, like, like you said, with the flurry and 
and Bennington won their right there and they stopped it. I know, like you said, when I was with Cope, we the ref told me that he's already kicked out of the game. They can't let him fight. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess every situation is different, but I feel like if the two guys want to go and they're at the red line, just let them go. I mean, then you pick them both out and it's a wash, but obviously the refs have to do their job. So I, I get it from the other standpoint, but I don't, as far as all the rulings of that, I don't even know it. All right. Well, have you ever had one? I mean, you ever had a goalie fight? No, no. Yeah, I fought in the American League. My one year in the American League, I fought. Uh, um, he was a righty. He was actually in the Anaheim Ducks system. Uh, trying to think his name, I can't even remember his name. You Jeff, just uh, you fought him though. Yeah, I think Jeff Delorier or something like that. He was a righty goalie. He was yeah. It was actually funny. It was in the TV timeout. He because. Uh, it was in Norfolk. He had to skate past in the second period. Oh, yeah. And he said something to me and slashed me in the back of the leg. And I was young. I was 19. And I remember he was with Anaheim and we shared the net. And he was always, he was always kind of like a jackass. Never let me in the net. I was 19 years old. And then he's chirped me again. Now I forget where he was. And he said something. I skated to the bench, got water. And I was came back to my net and he said something else. And I just dropped my shirt and, Went after him. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, God dang. Hell right, yeah. We got Don't that on, take that we, shit. We, we got that on YouTube or no? Honestly, I don't know. You, you, you might be able to find it. I, I think it, I think it was Jeff Delory. I, I'm not 100% sure of the name. Well, well, well you should we'll remember because he wouldn't he wouldn't give you the net in practice. I so know. I don't we, like him. We need to call his ass out because oh, we, we don't like <laughs> him. How, how did you do uh, in the fight? Honestly, it was quick. He ripped my helmet off. I put, pushed my gloves down. I I think I punched him once, maybe in the neck, and he fell down, and that was it. But it was it was it was funny because I had to go in the locker room for five minutes. He got kicked out of the game, and after my five minutes was up, I went back and finished the game. Oh, nice! Hey, <laughs> hey Ryan Miller could have shown you how to fight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he got a yeah. bunch of scraps. He looked he like a crazy lunatic he too. Did. Yeah. Hey, so what pisses you off the most? Like, like when you're in practice, you know, and like, do guys go high heat on you at the beginning of practice where you like look at them like, you motherfucker, calm down. Let me get, let me feel this damn puck. Like, does that, does that yeah. bug you? Does that, you know? Yeah. I mean, now a lot of times though, I'm out there 15 minutes before doing a goalie skate or whatnot. So, I mean, I think really the only thing is you never want to get hit in the head. So I think anytime you get hit in the head, obviously you're mad or it just, irritates you so I'm, I'm like i said i'm pretty easy going but I, I mean you ask anybody i don't think anybody ever wants to get hit in the head or the collarbone so no. I'd, I'd say those are those are the two things that would make me mad unless i'm shooting <laughs> unless andy's shooting he doesn't <laughs> lift the puck up anyway <laughs> then it's okay hey listen uh but i've seen you snap though like you, sometimes it's good for a goalie yeah. to like like because like here in st louis man i feel like bennington sometimes it's like calculated like He's got to be the emotional guy, you know, to like get things going sometimes, maybe to yeah. a fault, you know, like, but do you, do you recognize that with your team? Sometimes you're just like, fuck, I got to get the boys going. I'm, I'm going to lose my shit here and just try to get them going. Uh, maybe I did it a little more when I was younger. I, I think I was more um, feisty, I guess maybe is a good word, but now I'm just kind of. Now you're like, hey, job. I'm I'm seeing 55 shots a game, so yeah. I, like yeah, I'm not wasting my energy. My energy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's somebody else's job. But no, I I, mean, I know when when I was younger, I definitely was more active and, and stirred it up. Now I just save the puck, it, do the best I can, keep the head? puck out of the net. How's your head? Anybody like rock you behind the net like Luchik did to um, you know Ryan Miller, like anything like that? No. Yeah, I'm, knock on wood. I, I've been good. I don't think I. I don't think I ever had anything. Your head's okay though, concussion wise and all that stuff from pucks and all that. Yeah, yeah. Knock on wood. I've I've always been pretty good. So hopefully, that's hopefully nice. that. Yeah, hopefully the, I, I stay that way. I mean, that's obviously a big. And I I think a lot of it's you got to have luck too. I mean, you never know. People take shots from the point. Could be going on the ice. Next thing you know, it deflects up and hits you in the head. So, and you can't. And I feel like those are the hardest ones, the ones where you don't see them coming and can brace yourself for the impact. So, I think some of it's luck, but you do the best you can, obviously, to protect yourself. Hey, isn't it weird though, as a goalie, because you see everything, everything's set up. You you, you evaluate everything because you're right there. Like you see some of these guys, like uh, Kessel and who's the other cat from uh, Florida that played like 900 games straight. Like as a goalie, Yandel, Yandel, Keithy Yandel. 
And like you're as a goalie, like you see these shots coming in. You got fifty. You got fifty shots. You got a hundred mile an hour shots from the blue line. Some of these guys, especially defensemen, that go nine hundred games without getting injured, isn't that isn't that unbelievable? Like, what do you? How do you? How do you look at that and evaluate that? It's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy, and and I think it's even crazier if you look at it recently. I mean, the, those guys that have these streaks going, especially through COVID and everything, is it, it, it really is crazy. And I, and like I said, a lot of it is a testament to those guys because you know that they're playing with bumps and bruises. They're, they're playing with, with sicknesses just to keep it going. And, and like I said, too, I mean, it, not taking anything away from those guys, but you definitely, need, you definitely need a little bit of luck for some balances to go your way. Because, oh, I mean, sometimes – I mean, like I said, sometimes for me or even some, like you had defensemen standing in front of the net, somebody tips a shot boom it could be off their foot mm-hmm. and it's broken you know what i mean so you, you definitely need some bounces to go your way but with that being said you don't take anything away from those guys being able to play that many games in a row with the way the league is now and through covid and everything it, it is really remarkable hey john it could go off their skate and go on the net too and th- that would drive exactly. me crazy yes. as a goaltender like do, do you want your guys to get the hell out of the way and let you make the save, or do you like them them blocking shots? And give me somebody you play with who's just an absolute lunatic who will block shots with their face, yes. and you're just like, this guy's an absolute Fucking animal. <laughs> I mean, I've I've played with a lot of guys that that block shots, and to the first part, I mean, I said it's just it, that's just bad luck. I mean, you, you can never get mad at somebody for trying to block a shot and it takes a bad bounce and goes in because I mean. It, t- it takes a lot of balls to stand in front of these slap shots and the way guys are shooting nowadays. So you, I don't think you ever you ever want to get mad at them. I mean, yeah, it's frustrating, but they're just as frustrated that they put the puck in than, than it went past me. So, I mean, it's that, that's definitely – you don't take anything away. You give those guys credit, you tip your cap. But like I said, sometimes it's just shitty, shitty bounces. And then, honestly, every year, no matter what team I – mean, you, you always play – everybody's – blocking shots i mean last year we had nate Beaulieu blocking shots with his feet his chest his head i mean it's everybody though up and down the lineup obviously defensemen maybe block more shots than than the forwards but you the forwards are still laying out diving in front of 95 100 mile an hour slap shots long body on the ice or one knee down getting hit in the ankle or the foot in the groin i mean That's just the way. That's the way the game is now. I mean, you you got to be able to play offense and defense. You got to be able to sacrifice, and I mean, everyone does it now. Because if hey. you don't, then you'll find someone else that will do it. Yeah. No shit. You start flamingo in it, you know. And, and, yeah. and Marty would yell at me. He'd be like, "No, just let the shot go go through. I'll I'll, I'll find it. Don't get in front of that shot because you're going to tip it." Hey, but did you ever like? What was the worst game you played professionally? Did you get lit up like a Christmas tree and you're just like, get me the fuck out of here? <laughs> like, what am I doing? I, I mean, I think there's always probably one of those games every year or two. I mean, I, I think it's just inevitable. I mean, you you play 82 games. There's going to be there's going to be nights where there might, I mean, there's probably maybe one or two a year, whether you lose six nothing or you lose seven one. I mean, one that sticks out in my mind that I'll never forget those. uh it was back when they did the bye weeks, like two separate. So like half the teams did it one week, half the teams did it the other week. Mm-hmm. And we came back and we were playing in Winnipeg, I think at like a one o'clock game. Ugh. And they already played, they already had like three games under their belt or two. And this was our first game. And we get in, we didn't practice. We skated, we had a morning skate at like seven or seven thirty in the morning for like a one or two o'clock game. And after the first period, I think we were losing five nothing, and we got outshot like twenty three to two. Oh, <laughs> and after, and, and I remember we go in the locker room, and we're just like, "What the hell is happening?" Like, these guys look like an all star team, and we look like we should be playing Mike Double A. Like it was just like that was one time where out where everybody in the locker room was just like, "There's nothing we can do. We're gasping for air. We can't do anything." There's skate circles around us. Like that was. Off the top of my head, that's probably one of the games at Stick Al where it was just like we were just watching them skate circles around us. Okay, so listen, what, what's it like going through a rebuild? Like when you go into games and you really know you have like 
you're, you're, you don't have a best chance of winning. You know, like what is the coach saying? All right, guys, this is our night. You know, tonight, let, let's let's get it going tonight. We can win tonight. And you just know in the back of your mind that you're just like up against it. Like, was that a challenge for Dallas Eakins? Was he like a rah rah guy? And how deflating is it, man? When you, when you when you're going to the rink every single day and the team is struggling. Yeah, I mean it, it, it's tough. I mean uh, the the one good thing we had is, I mean obviously we weren't we didn't have a good year on the ice, but off the ice, I mean we had a really good group of guys. We we were all very close friends, so it made it that helps. I mean when when you're when you're coming together and you got a whole team that's that's pretty close and cares about each other, that makes it a little bit easier. But I mean it is tough. I mean you're going into games. And you're just like, oh, hopefully we don't get blown out. I mean, you know, some guys are thinking that. And I think that's the challenge is like, you, you got to be able to. You, the biggest thing I think is you got to change that. You got to have the belief that, you know what, we can win it. And, and you're not going to win every night. And yeah, I mean, we're going to get blown out some nights. But I think the biggest thing is you got to change the mentality of don't go into the games hoping, oh, let's keep it close, see what happens. We can win these games. And, and I think that you got to change you got to change the mindset to a winning mindset and i mean it's not easy and it might not happen right away but i think in the long run that that's kind of how how you have to start it you got you got to change the change the culture and turn it from losing to rebuild into let's let's start winning these games let's find a way to win these games whether it's one nothing or we got to take it into overtime or shoot out let's 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 find our identity and figure out the way we have to play to have success to keep all these games close and and then find the ways to win these close games yeah see like and i get it like if you're a gm you come in listen you you want to strip it down you want to like start from the bottom get these high draft picks and 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 try to find a way to to rebuild the thing and like a a veteran guy man like again your career is only so long you want to have a chance to win and you want to you want to be surrounded by by guys that give you a chance to win so listen i guess it's been reported that you asked for a trade like are you are you frustrated that that hasn't happened yet like how do you see the rest of this offseason going do you hope you finally get moved just to give yourself a fresh start and give yourself a, a, you know, to go to a team that has a chance to win. I'm not really sure it's going to happen, to be honest. I mean, um, as far as, as far as everything, I mean, I, I had a good conversation with Pat, a few conversations with him at the end of the year. And um, that's just, I mean, the conversations are just between him and I, we didn't want it to go any further than that. So, I mean, we talked, and, um, it's been good. I haven't talked, spoken with them in the last few weeks, but I mean, right now I'm just kind of, I'm worried about me. I'm, I'm focusing on training in the off season and getting ready for the season. I, I mean, I, obviously there's a little uncertainty. I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but whether I'm in Anaheim or somewhere else, I'm just worried about being ready to play and I want to have a good year. I mean, I, whether I'm back in Anaheim or somewhere else, I'm just worried about getting myself ready, my body ready and, getting ready to have a good year. I mean, that's, that's all I can do. I can't really focus on everything else because it's kind of out of my control. Yeah, but the, I get you. The, the, the hard part is, I mean, look at all these deals that are being signed right now. Guys are signing below market value. They're signing one-year deals, Johnny. You've got several years left on your deal, and, and you're making a good bit of money, man. Is that part, like, frustrating just watching – just the overall, you know, economic system of the game right now, where where teams just don't have money because the cap being where it is, because that's why that's, that's the only reason why you probably haven't been moved, or if they can't move you, that's that's why because teams don't have any cap space. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, frustrating, but I, like I said, I mean, I, I think everyone's kind of in the same boat. So I mean, I you think about it, it's on the back of your mind, but I just kind of worry about what I can't control and. What I'm trying to do is make sure I'm ready for the season and in the best shape and have my body as healthy as I can be to have a great year. And, and that, that's my mindset, and that's that's my focus now. And just doing everything I can, and then well, the rest will hopefully take care of itself one way or another. Yeah, there's other guys going through it too, man. Hellebuck's going through the same yeah, thing, man. They like, are. Yeah, so I, Until next year. I, I, you know, I just hope it all works out for hey, you, man. Let me, let me ask you something, though, Johnny. Uh, okay, so the draft lottery. Look, like you know, this Connor Bedard kid's coming up. You guys are way down in the, in, the, in the standings. Like, when you didn't get the number one pick overall, were you, were you guys all watching that? Were you like, God damn it? Because I know you got Leo Carlson and all that stuff, and, and it, it, you know, you get the second pick overall. It's all good. But when that all went down, were you kind of like, like what? What was your mindset? We're like, God damn, we might get this Connor Bedard. 
or were you guys just like, ah, whatever happens, happens? I mean, I think if you ask anybody and, and you have a chance to <clears throat> take Connor Bedard, you obviously would, would love that. I mean, me personally, we were uh, we were away, so I didn't I didn't watch the draft lottery. I obviously saw it later on Twitter and all that. But I mean, I I think it's one of those things. I mean, he's obviously been talked about for a few years now. There's a lot of hype. Yeah, you know, it's obviously he he's he's skilled. He's got the shot. He's got everything. So I think if you ask anybody, obviously you you want to take him. But I mean, it is what it is. Like you said, it's the draft lottery and. Sometimes luck's in your favor. Sometimes it's not. So kind of just, like I said before, you can only control so much, and the rest you just kind of got to roll with the punches. Were you surprised they picked that uh, Leo Carlson over that, uh, uh, the, what's the name? Andy? Fantilli. Fantilli kid. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I know there was rumblings. That they, thought, they thought both were good. So I didn't really know what, which way it was going to go. I mean, I think personally I just saw that Fantilli a little more just by playing at Michigan and yeah. for team Canada. And I know he was friends with a few guys on our team and, and whatnot, but I, I don't, that doesn't take anything away from Carlson. I just haven't, haven't seen him play or anything as much as Fantilli. So they're all going to be good. Dude. Hey, listen, but <laughs> as an American kid, you're at the program and I, everyone thought you were going to Michigan. Right. And then you ended up going to Kitchener. Kitchener like baby. what, what yep. happened? They they did they come in with the they they they, they back up the Brinks truck or whatever yeah, and drop yeah, some Johnny bags off of cash off at your no. at your doorstep. No. Like, You're coming to Kitchener. <laughs> it was just one of those things where um, I was just kind of the. I remember it was in the summertime and I was talking to a few of my buddies and talking to my family and we're just trying to figure out what what the right move was before I was because I, I was due to sign a letter of intent and just talking with my family and people that were close to me. And my goal was to hopefully play in the NHL in two years. And so I was going into it either planning to be in school for two years or go play juniors for two years. And I thought for me and, and where I was at, at my stage in my development to go play, uh, in, the, in the OHL for Kitchener would, would benefit me the most kind of having more of a pro schedule and, and that, and for me, that 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 was what I looked at it as. And honestly, there's there's no right or wrong reason. I always I always tell people this. For me, I feel like I was, I kind of had my college years at the program where I was able to get my body stronger, put on muscle, and all that. And I was ready more for to play more games of hockey. Where if you need more time to develop and you, and you need to put on more muscle and body, then maybe the college route's right. But I always tell him. And my brother's 20 now. He's trying to go to college i said if you get a college scholarship that's the best thing you could ask for i mean mm -hmm. how many people make it to the nhl if you can if you can play hockey and get a chance to go play hockey at college that's one of the best things you could do yeah did you did you know anything about the ohl like growing up in pittsburgh like were you like okay i'm going to kitchener like this is like a whole different where am i <laughs> and like yeah, you're no, going I to all these different I, buildings I you know yeah i didn't know much about it i mean i know i remember our, they drafted me. I don't even know when it was. And they, and they sent me a, a hat and a Jersey. And I thought it was like a New York Rangers Jersey at first. And I was, <laughs> and then I just kind of learned about them. I mean, cause like you said, growing up in Pittsburgh and I, I didn't really know much about it. The closest team I think was the Erie Otters. And I mean, we didn't really go to any of those games. So I, I just wasn't familiar, but Kitchener was a great city. I lived with the great billet family for two years. The city treated, treated all of us really well. I mean, Hockey in that city is, is awesome. The, the fans, the, the community, it was, for me, it was a great experience. And I'm, I'm super happy and super grateful that I was able to play there. All right, a couple more things for you, man. You've been great. You've we been appreciate awesome, it. Um, first off, listen, Bob Murray, when, when he was the GM and all that went down, like, did you get along with him? Like, did you think he was, he was kind of crazy? Like, a lot of the stuff that came out, did you see that firsthand? Or were you a little surprised to hear that? Like, I mean, what was your take on all of it? Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't really know. I mean, Bob, Bob to me, he was, he's, he was an old school guy. I mean, he was, he was. Uh, I think that's the best way to put it. He was an old school guy, but I mean, he, he got it. I mean, I, I kind of got to see quite a few sides of him. I mean, he was the GM there for a while. He was behind the bench there for a bit. So I, I got to see him in different roles. I mean, as a GM, obviously he's a little tougher and, and more kind of set in his ways, and then. I think when he came and coached, I mean, he was different. He was talking to us more. I mean, he just 
more social. So you kind of got to see a different side of them. And I think that kind of helped. And then, I mean, as far as the relationship, I mean, the players, he was, he was old school in the set in the sense that it was black and white, you know what to expect. You did things a certain way. And as long as you, as long as you bought into that, then he treated you with respect. And so I can only speak from that side of it. I don't, I don't know the other side of it. Um, Grateful for obviously he drafted me, signed a few contracts with him. I had a good relationship with him, so I can really only speak from how he was with me and, and what I know as far as the other guys on the team and that, that kind of stuff. But I mean, he was he was a great GM, and I loved him as a coach. He was always very into practicing, and then I'll never forget he coached us for probably two and a half, three months, and. I think my all my time in Anaheim, that was the least I ever practiced was when Bob was behind the bench. Oh, and really? Nice. Hey, like, <laughs> He's like, yeah. "Hey, I assigned you to like night, an eight year all. deal. You need to, you need to go go rest those knees uh, and those you hips." You had eighty shots oh. last night. Go rest those knees. <laughs> no, I, but not just me. It was everybody. Like we just, we never really had team practices. We would just morning skate, and that was it. I mean, he was probably coach after the deadline for like a month and a half, two months, and we made pre- maybe practice ten times max. It was morning skates and. That was it. So it was good. It was really good. Hey, what about like uh, Getze? We had him on the pod too. I mean, that guy, I, right? Like he ran the room. He's your leader. He could control the young guys. Like not having him around, like it, it's kind of a big void that uh, you're kind of missing, right? And Perry. And Perry, no shit. Yeah, Every I mean, I, I think, yeah. I mean, obviously when Perry left, it was definitely weird. And then Getze, it was... It was it was even more weird. I mean, obviously he's been there his whole career and just, just his presence. I, I, there was obviously a level of respect throughout the room, throughout the coaching staff and, and just the whole organization. I mean, he, he, he's done so much for the organization. So it was definitely, uh, it was definitely weird, especially at the beginning of the year going in and you don't have your captain, a guy that's been there for his whole career. But um, he, I, I will say, I mean, he, he really did a lot his last year as far as trying to mentor the young guys and talk to the guys that needed to step up and kind of provide more of a leadership role in his absence. So, I mean, he, he left a lasting mark on the organization and obviously he'll, he'll still be a huge part of it in the future, but he's, he's given so much and to, to the organization and having him not there was definitely, uh, definitely a, weird feeling around the room but as the, as this year went on it was kind of get get used to it but definitely was a adjustment well who's the guy uh, that who's, the who's the guy that takes care of all the boys and now you know what i mean the money guy that kind of takes the guys out that kind of pays for shit like who who's that guy on anaheim now is, I it, mean, you? is it you no i mean there's a lot of guys that do it i mean it, it was it was like you got me you got shaddy you got cam fowler you got Henrique. I mean, I'm Adam. sure I'm missing a few, but I mean, there's there's a lot of good guys still there. Um, Shaddy played a big part. I mean, he he was the fine fun guy. He he uh, helped help set up a lot of parties. I mean, it was kind of by community. I mean, I think the biggest thing is you lose a guy like that. I, I don't think anyone was expecting one person to come in and say, you know what, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna fill fill his shoes because I, I think that's just too tall of a task. You're there your whole career and those relationships you, you can't bring somebody in so i think it was just trying to do it by committee you got you got zegers like passing the puck to milano from behind the net and like like here here guys just follow, follow our lead we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll get us on sports center yeah. <laughs> yeah and you did hey hey did you think that lynn that um that lynn home hampus lynn home like did you think he was that good like are you like he's he was like unbelievable in, in boston like what was your take on him as a teammate yeah, I wasn't surprised. I, I mean, I, I grew up, he was a year younger than me, but we came to, up together. I played with him for a lot of years. And he, he was always, he's just a steady player. I mean, he's very good defensively and he, he's very talented offensively. I don't know, maybe from the goal standpoint, maybe he's, he's maybe not as far as scoring all the time, but I mean, he's got unbelievable vision, breaking the puck out, just a really, really solid, steady you know what to expect. He can play power play. He can play penalty kill. He can play a top line. He can play uh, first pair. He can play second pair. So, I mean, he, I think just he, he's very versatile. 
he's very steady. You know what you're getting with him, and just his skating ability, the way the way he sees the ice to break the puck out. I mean, it's he was able to do a lot of things. Yeah, man, you guys have lost some good players though. Josh Manson was a oh, good. He got D-man. locked though, dude. Yeah, who's that? Limholm. Oh, Campus, yeah. Remember? Yeah. yeah. By Svechnikov, mm-hmm. I believe. But, uh, no, some good players. Hey, last thing for you, because people should know, man, like, you, you had a great run in the World Juniors, man. You won the gold medal yeah, back right. in 2013, so big shout-out for that. It, that's still a highlight of of your memory, and how much would you love to see some international tournaments come about and you can no put that shit. jersey back on, Gibby? Yeah, I, yeah, that's definitely a highlight. It was, it was like I, I was talk, talking to you guys earlier, we, we had an unbelievable team. We had some great players on there, and we were a really close family, so it, it was definitely a special special for us and the second part yeah i mean i think anytime you get a chance to to represent your country at an international stage or at any any level is an honor so i it'd be i think if you ask anybody around the league i think everybody would be excited to try and implement more international or, or tournaments like that try to get the best in the world playing against each other and i think it's great great for the game hey is your wife a pittsburgh girl or, or did you meet her out in socal Yep, uh, Pittsburgh girl. We grew oh, there up. There you go. Uh, I've known her since first grade. Oh, a great how together. cute! I yeah. love that man. Isn't it great? Yeah, that we go way back. If your wife, she knows everything about yeah, you. She knows you like back in the day before. She knows everything. Like, yep. When yeah, you were right. playing double A and getting cut by the high school team, she Johnny, she you. knew you. <laughs> yep, she yeah, she liked me when I was back playing, trying to play volleyball and basketball. So <laughs> volleyball, volleyball, so I funny. love it. Right. Hey, real quick, I know you're American, and it's Fourth of July weekend, dude. And I, you came on the podcast, so we really appreciate it. Like, do you are you like me? And you post like little flags up all around your house. No, no, you no, get no, fi- no, 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 no. I'm just saying, Andy, no one does that. I do, <laughs> and uh, you get like fireworks and all that shit. Like, what are you doing for Fourth of July, man? Um, so this weekend, uh, yeah, we just. We had had family over, hung out by the pool, swam, um, went out and saw fireworks Friday, Saturday. We don't set it off ourselves. We go down just with the sparklers and those little poppets, have the kids throw them and oh, yeah. watch some fireworks. And I think uh, just going to hopefully the weather's nice and have a barbecue on the actual 4th of July this week. What do you barbecue, though? Like, are you, are you a meat eater, unlike Andy? <laughs> Um, honestly, we do a little bit of everything. We probably just hamburgers, hot dogs, and then we'll do like some pasta, some salad, some fruit. Kind of depends on the weather. If it's I hot, know. try and get some cool stuff, some lighter stuff. If it's raining, I, that's the only thing in Pittsburgh. You never know. Could be raining, could be 70 degrees, could be 80 degrees. So that's, that's the one part I miss. Very, a very underrated city. Do you skate with all those guys in the summer? Like you see Sid and all those guys before you head out to, to camp? Um... I haven't the last few years because uh, usually we head back kind of last week of August, um, and they ha- they usually were coming in later. And now I I don't even think we're skating at this summer. We're skate we're skating at a different rink because the Penn's practice rink's just filled with camps and everything all summer. So I probably so yeah we can't really skate with them. We we have to do our own stuff. Okay. They hey, listen, man. Rings. All the best to you. Your family, man. man. Yes. Um. Great talking to you, for real, man. You've had a great career. You're a hell of a goaltender. I, I hope yeah, right I hope are. everything works out, man. Yeah. I, w- I would love to see you play with a with a competitive team, a We're contending team, you, man, Gibby. just to see you uh, take a team over the top, man. So We're all the best you. to you. Whatever happens, it happens. And, and best of luck with that baby coming, too. Yep, you're the man. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, and uh, happy 4th of July. Yeah. You too, big boy. Same to you, man. See take you. care. The Chemistry Podcast is brought to you by Bellman. And Bellman.com, B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com. Get out there, Detroit, Missouri. Check it out on one side. You got the Buick, the GMC. Options for everybody. Then right across the street, you got the Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Again, find something that works for you. and Get yourself a new set of wheels in time for the summer. Yeah. All right, that was Johnny Gibson. Great guy. You call him Gibby? Yeah. Yeah, Gibby, Johnny, what up? He gets a little heated, man. I see him go after some guys. You know, he'd use that blocker. I always like asking these cats that make a ton of money, though. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you Yeah, but he just doing? seems really chill, though. He man. does. I bet he's got a nicer setup than you think. No, his setup is <laughs> sick. <laughs> you know, I bet you. In Laguna oh, Beach? I, I don't do much. No, you got a, you got a $4 million house, yeah. Brian. Oh, Laguna yeah. Beach. Like, that's four. Six? In Laguna? It's probably like eight, nine million. He ain't spending $8 million on a house making $8 million. No way. Sure they are. He's going to spend $8 million bucks on a house? I don't think so. I think it's $8 million bucks. I mean, for eight, the... Ha- eight's a lot, dude. 
I know it is. That's a big, big house. But like Kopitar and all those guys out there, man, they've got 10, 11, $12 million houses. Really? Yeah. $10 million. Guess Laugh, you think his house was $3 million? Remember all those houses he, that they... No, I guess I've made look up, Look up Guess Laugh's house in California, how much he sold that thing for. Yeah, you curious. can Google that. $10 million? He had a sick, like, kind of like a um, modern farmhouse, like my house. Oh, yeah, just 8.5? Like yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. You live that's out guessing. there, like, you know, you're talking Laguna, like, you know... Close to the water out there, man. It's yeah, Getsy spends a lot of money. I bet you Getsy house, spends. He spends money, dude. I don't think Gibby has an eight million dollar house. I would say he's probably. I'm four, just saying four, that's five. just the price of four, if you five. want like a real nice I, house. I, I get it. I get the market. I bet you his house in Pittsburgh would probably be ten, eleven million dollars in California. Probably. Shit, our house is what? Oh my god, I know. <laughs> Are you kidding? On our lots that we have. I went to a dinner last night. Actually, um, oh. a friend was in town from uh, uh, California. Did you eat anything? I did. What'd you have? Oh my god, it was so good. Like what'd you have? Salmon, uh, vegetables, <laughs> street corn type thing. <laughs> it's always um, like salmon and veggies. It's never <laughs> anything else. Like carrot, you're never carrot crea- cake. You're not creative. Carrot cake. Like Andy eats for dessert. One like there's one thing on the menu that Andy could eat, maybe. Like, are you gonna eat anything when we go to Alvin Oak? In a I can right. Are you next Saturday? I'm gonna I'm gonna watch you. I might film you eating. Film me. Post it. Like, hmm. like look at this. He's eating. He actually eats. You don't, though. It's not true. I bet you you won't even eat that much. I can't wait to eat today. I bet you you won't even eat. I'm going to get sushi today, dude. I don't give a fuck. I'm getting sushi. I'm ordering up a 50-pack. Go to Bellman and pick some up. It doesn't work that way, Andy. That's a stupid thing to say. <laughs> I am going to go pick up a huge platter of just sashimi. Oh, sashimi. You like oh, sashimi? Yes. Just like the, the raw yes. fish. I want the raw if fish. You want it over rice? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. That's yeah. not sashimi when it's over rice. Sashimi's, it's just the just fish part. But I like rice too, but it fills you up a little bit more. But I could mm-hmm. eat I could eat sushi. I could eat four hundred dollars. My kids can eat four hundred dollars worth of sushi. Four hundred dollars. I could sit e- easy with sake. I love sake too. Oh, God. So goddamn good. Damn good. I want I I'll, I'll eat fucking salmon roe. I'll eat octopus. Oh, you like the, the you like the fish eggs? Salmon eggs? Yeah, god. Yeah, I don't eat that right. shit. It is so good. Makes you horny, too. That's not true. It does to me. Is it an aphrodisiac? I believe it is. Really? It's like oysters. Uh-huh. Little salmon roe. Oysters will do that to you. Oysters will get you. They'll get you. I'll eat the fuck out of oysters. God, I'm starving, man. Me too, man. Oh, my neighbors are cooking brisket right now. They're the s- I wonder the what my neighbors people. are cooking. Probably curry. They had some trees come down, though. They I, make it cook- I hope it didn't. <laughs> I hope, it did, <laughs> I hope it didn't hit their chickens. You're making curry? Pr- I'm probably. Probably. I make a hell of a curry, dude. I'll eat curry. Are you kidding? I'll eat Indian food. I'll eat fucking food from anywhere, dude. I, I love food. Like, I do. Like, I go to a Vietnamese restaurant and crush oh, yeah. everything. Reminder, yeah. the uh, fact check, fact checking. Uh, go ahead. Ho- fact check me. Is open. Then fact check 24/7. me then. 24-7. Then fact check me then. About the submarine. Let's go then. They're going to. You're probably wrong about something. On about what? Show. About what? Go ahead. Fact check me. Like, you think I'm just throwing this shit out there? I did my research you on know that, that fucking l- thing. That's, we t- I talked about it for 45 minutes. You couldn't even keep up. Like, I, uh, you couldn't even keep up the conversation. You're asking me dumb questions. Uh, and then now you're fact checking me. Like, okay, I want that. Always fact check. Let me know when I'm wrong. Did you see that little girl in Yellowstone get attacked by that bison? Man, that happens all the time. No, it doesn't. Get in your fucking car. There is a sign that says, do not get within like 100 get yards. Get away from them. They're like wild animals out there, like really wild. They're like legit wild animals. Andy, they're wild animals. They're not like wild animals. They are wild animals, and they're in the wild. That's not a fucking... So you had your daughter out there? Yeah, dude. Five-year-old? Stupid. Dude, she got tossed Stupid. in the air, I want to say, 35 feet. Stupid. Did get you see away. it? away. No, but he I, just put. But I don't think they eat you, the bison. No, they're not going to eat you. They're going to kill you. Gonna how how you. are they going to kill you? With their horns. Will they ste- stomp will on they you? Step on you, Andy. They can look at you and you'll die. Who are you kidding? They'll stomp all over your ass and buck you. So and there's a it. place here in town that I'll, I'll like go to, and there's bison it's right, everywhere. It's right by and me. They get close to the car. I'm waiting right for them to like ram the car. Right by me on 44. Yeah, I know. What's it called again? Uh, yeah, Lone Oak. Lone Oak Park. Yeah, yeah. don't. Don't have Ty get out of the car. No. That's stupid. Are you safe in the car? Yes, you're fine. But they could pop your tire. Okay. Then call. Then you'll be okay. Who do you call? 
Triple A. Jeez. Don't worry about them popping your tire. Don't worry about Ty getting bucked, you know? Just don't go out there. Just, you can see them. It's all good. So don't be stupid. I don't really need to see them all the time. I mean, the bison and are bison. cool. You know? I have bison by my house. I told you on, I showed you on uh, side by and side. And elk, too, man. We used to get a ton of elk in my backyard when I lived in Arizona. But, you know, just got to be careful, you know? Just, I, just I know. watch them. Just enjoy them. Yeah. Just let them just do their thing. Don't be stupid with them. You know what I mean? But I hope that five-year-old. Can you look into that and tell me if she's okay? Yeah, or, I'll, I'll fact yeah. check you. Yeah, find out for yeah, me. I'll fact check you. Oh, you need to be fact checked. Well, I, I have a lot of knowledge. Anything stand out from Gibby? A great guy. A great guy. Probably needs to get the hell out of Anaheim. Hey, he needs to go. Listen, and I know Patty Verbeek is not like, no, I'm not trading you. You're my goalie. No, Patty Verbeek is like trying to rebuild this thing. He doesn't want a goalie making $6.4 million. Is he making 6 I thought it was more than six four is his okay. AAV. So I'm sure he had some heavy years where he was making yeah. 8 whatever. I didn't look at the salary breakdown. But, you know, at the same time, when you're rebuilding a franchise and you have an elite goaltender, you, you can't just give them away. You're not like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll eat half the salary and you just give us a six-round pick. No. Yeah. You, no. you, you got to get a first, high-end prospect, maybe a, a young roster player, whatever you're looking for. You got to make sure you get that. You can't just give him away. But the problem is nobody's got cap space for that. Nobody. Like Pittsburgh needed a goalie. They just re-signed um, Tristan Jari. Jari. You know, that would have been a perfect fit for the old Pittsburgh boy. Pittsburgh's sneaky youth hockey market, man. Well, it should be. That junior pens program. How can you not be? You came in the league this basically the same time as the Blues. Mm -hmm. Blues came in at 67. You're in the East Coast. Yeah, you're close to traveling to you, all these different yeah, spots. Yeah, and not to mention, like, um, you had fucking Mario and Yogs, and then you have Crosby and Malkin. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. you better get into yeah. it. Three Stanley Cups, or five Stanley Cups. I mean, Brad Hall came into town. Why do you think there's all this made the NHL? Holly was playing golf right in front of... Uh, Whitney and uh, Kevin Hayes the other day. Oh, really? <laughs> Drinking Codigo tequila? Probably. But, you know, Holly got us into hockey, and then I made it. First one ever. No big deal. And then everybody else No, Pat LaFontaine no, was no, the no, first no. one I was ever. Born around, uh, uh, uh. He, he left moved when he was to Michigan when he, he was didn't seven. He did shit. Uh, uh, uh. And there's, get a, him on. there's a display. Um, there's yeah. a display at the local rink where Ty plays. For Pat LaFontaine, the first ever to ever make and it. And they, they say, put him first, they put me second. Although I do have a mural of myself on that in a multi-million dollar facility that we have. Huge picture of me. And then I'm like it's right It's a picture next. of like f six guys. Yeah, six. In the collage. Yeah. And I don't think Mine's Pat's gigantic. on there. Yeah, he is. No, uh, not Pat LaFontaine. No, Maroon's Well, on why there. would he be? He left when he was seven years old. He didn't grow up and play here like I did. Get out of here. Get on with yourself. And we want him on, too, by the way, because he's an awesome guy. Well, and he does and, a ton. And he's the first. I'm the first. Do you know that Pat LaFontaine came back to St. Louis, and I drove around with him, and we, we went to his childhood home, and he, I, I, I actually made him cry, like, very, very emotional during the interview. When we went to the rink, and he was talking about his dad bringing him there and stuff like yeah. that, and he got very emotional. And he left. And then he left. What do you mean that he, that then he, he left? Then he left no, then we, then we went down to the hospital. No, but then he left the city at seven years old and grew up playing hockey somewhere else. Michigan. So he, yeah, so he didn't do it here. No, he started like here. Did. He started no, but, here. But I, I grew up here and played in the system. He, he, do you he, not remember that? Pat LaFontaine Why do you think we're partners ever. right now? <laughs> do you think you're partners with me because of anything else? You want to be the first? Yes, who I was, am the who first. Who was the second? Uh, that's a good question. Was it Bullock? Probably not. Who was the second? Paul. It, it's maybe? all. It's all. Maybe Paul. He stopped. Did no, Paul, Jan. Did Paul play before Jan? No, Jan played before Paul. You sure? Jan almost played before me, but I got there like a couple months before Jan. You're right, Yanni, who I love. Although I, I to just kill saw him. Yanni. The, I love him so the much. The other day, Jan Stasny, a little shout out, baby. I love your daddy. Love your brother. Love your whole family. You're my roommate. <laughs> I wanted to kill you because you snored, but I love you. Paul Stasny still wants to play. By the way, good play then. Let the dust. Settle, and then he'll try to figure that out. Yeah. yeah man. And if not, then, you know. Then go spend your money and watch your kids grow up. Oscar Sundquist is still out there, too. I'd get him in two seconds. Would you? Would he? Oscar? No, I mean, two or, seconds. Like, Well, depends on what the money is. I mean, you're going he to he's gonna have to sign a one-year deal, probably. Probably. Then get him. Teams he's are like, winner. listen, I have $2 million. So he's, a he, he he's a winner. He is. He's a winner. You know, he it's might hurt on some been, LBs. He's been hurt a lot. He's a winner. I'll take him. Oscar Sunquist. Barbara Chef going back to uh, Vegas. Five for five, baby. Let's go. Good for you, Barbie. Great guy. Sometimes, you know what? 
And again, again, don't go under this current climate. Like I would not have wanted to go into UFA, man, and try to like you just look at the deals that have been signed. Just pay me five for five. We're good. O'Reilly's deal was probably done yeah, four, long five. before free agency. Yep. Right, right. But if I would have told O'Reilly at the beginning of last season that, hey, you're going to sign for 4.5, he would have been like, fuck that. I know. No I chance. We were thinking like 6.2 or something. <laughs> now he's 4.5 in Nashville. Now, he, now you know, entering Ryan, free agency, I knew he wasn't going to get yeah, you know, much no, more. Yeah, no doubt. You know, but, but, but where you think Ryan O'Reilly down in Nashville, I think he's going to be okay. He's probably playing guitar somewhere right now. Exactly. And Duchesne gets bought out. Hey, listen. You guys can read into it however you want with Nashville. But... Sometimes the obvious answer is right in front of your face. And the reality is um, Barry Trotz is coming in and saying, I want Duchesne and I want Johansson out of my life. Get the fuck out of here. Exactly right. It's exactly so right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trade this guy for nothing, and I'm going to buy this guy out because I can't trade him because nobody has any money. And I'm, he put up 50-plus points, and I'm still going to buy his Except ass Kevin out Hayes. because I don't want them in the room. Because they don't. I want Ryan O'Reilly in my yeah, locker no room. No doubt. Change, change the scenery. And, and th- same thing with... It's with not just change of scenery. It's like, no, what kind of example? Of are they committed? Yeah. Do you want to be a country music star? you want to be an NHL? Like, what do you want to be? Just like Kevin Hayes. Like, the Blues got him for half off. They just needed him out of that locker room, man. And it's like he's a bad... In Philly? Dude. In Philly. They probably want him to Well, they're out. just trying to rebuild. They, they, well, they're getting rid of everybody. They've been fucking fighting with Kevin Hayes for years. What are mm-hmm. you talking about? So it's all drama with him every, every day with Philly. And it's not... Maybe not his fault. Maybe it's somebody else. Maybe it's a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. But you need to change the scenery. They wanted him the fuck out. You got a six rounder and you kept fifty percent of the salary. You wanted him out. Six foot fucking four center that gets fifty points a year, and you hold fifty percent of the salary and get a six round pick for him. Where does Shane go? Dallas on a three on a three yeah, million dollar deal. Dallas. Which Dallas. is pretty good pickup for Dallas. They need a little bit more scoring. It's they a good. Took him to the promise Listen, land. I've always I, I like Duchesne. But for me, I feel like he's always just been like an individual player, right? He's pretty good. Like all his highlights are individual plays, never yeah. seemed to be overly creative. Although a couple of years ago, all of a sudden he started turning it on with a couple of those guys in Nashville, and they had a really good year. He had a career season. And, and for the first time you saw him like giving and going it, like he just was crea- being a little more creative with his line mates. You saw like more like, you Get know. him on. His goals to me, you look at his highlights, they're always like, you know, the break, breakaways one. or he's like ahead of the play <laughs> or, the or he's spinning around and like doing his thing, yeah. but never really, never like being like overly creative with his line mates. You know okay. what I'm saying? I get you. And, and kind of like Rick Nash was like that too. And, 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 and rightfully so. That's why he's bounced around. He can't really click anywhere because of that probably. But he's still a damn good yeah, player. Yeah, he's bounced around. He's bounced around a lot. Everyone's like, okay, like we've had two years of Matt Duchesne. Now it's time to. I know. That's a sign. You know, but sometimes Dallas is like, I'll take him on a we'll one year you. deal. Let's go. We, we're pretty. I, I don't know what he really does for them. I mean, obviously, it's a, you're adding a good player. Fifty points. Yeah, you're adding a good player. Well, what do you think they missed? Not getting to the next round. They probably need some more scoring. That helps you out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Jamie Ben's slowing down. Yes, some of those is. cats are slowing down, dude. You need an extra touch up there. Mm-hmm. Even if he's on third line, at least you got an extra touch. They got those young kids though. Robertson yeah, got, and yeah, you Wyatt got, Johnston and some of those guys. You got some guys. Sagan slows down, too. Gary so you, you just need. Rupe Hintz. They, I like they that, got, They got some good Rupe players. Hintz is fucking good. Big boy, too. So, like, we'll see what happens, man. But this is such a weird thing with the salary. Orlov, game. same situation. Signs it's two years good. in Carolina. He's yeah. like, listen, I'm not getting – I, I, I want to go to a good team. See, these guys want to go to a good team. Some guys want to stay on the East Coast. Yeah. Like, a guy like Orlov wanted to stay – you know, in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. You know, a guy like Blake Wheeler wants to stay in the Eastern Conference. So, again, your options are limited, man. Like, I, we saw a ton of deals, and I bet you if you added up all the salary of all the deals, I mean, it's 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 probably not that impressive if you added up every dollar that was just spent among NHL free agents in comparison to how many contracts were signed. Because people are signing these one-year deals, people are signing below market value, it's crazy. Like, uh, isn't the economy getting better and stuff like that? Yeah, slowly it is. The economy is getting better, um, and, and everywhere except the NHL. Why? Well, yeah, okay. Uh, well, figure it out then. NHL. I had some pissed-off agents I talked to, man. They're really upset about it. I bet they are. It's money out of your pocket, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's you money know? out of their pocket. No too. shit, it is. Of course. 
Now they got to go back. NHL and, though, they they just they don't even know what they are sometimes. The NHL. Like, good thing the products. Let's good. have Kerry Price announce the fifth Jesus, overall are pick. They fucking hey, dumb. let's tell Patrick Marlowe that the uh, fourth overall pick is the first. Overall and now they're like, pick. no pride jerseys now. Like now it's like you guys did that to yourself. Yeah, no shit. You did. You guys are so nerdy. You are. You mm-hmm. don't know what you are. You just you're you're what what's the next thing going? I we gotta get on that. Like you you don't. Nothing like you, you know, you don't, you don't break down barriers. Like you don't, you don't do shit. You copy what other people do right. and you try to do it and you, you're nerdy about it. You just, it. you say what you think you're supposed to you say. say. Exactly. Not but, like, no, but no real substance behind it and you, and no real, and like, you don't ca- you ca- you need to cater to your audience mm-hmm. and no, sorry, no real conviction behind your it. audience is a certain type. Like we're going to put them. together a committee. Yeah. Oh, yeah we are doing things. About? We're doing things. Look, look, everyone. We're doing things. Look, we're. We're just like you guys. Look at us. We're d- no, just just be yourself. Yes. Cater to your audience. You know. They cater to everybody but to our audience. I'm gonna cater to Hair Club. <laughs> is what I'm gonna cater Good. to. You should. Hairclub.com. Your hair's not that thick. Hairclub.com slash Cam is strict. That's our landing page, Cam. That's where you sign up for your first consultation. Just sign up and go in there and get it done. And just and ask about the pill. Just ask talk. about all the different just solutions they have. Just talk to them. Just talk to them. If you need anything, just let it's me like know. It's like a therapy just, session. Just reach out to me oh, if I, you I guys love need it. anything. They go in there and it's like they put that thing on your head. You're like, oh. It feels good. And it's huh? like talk to you about, you're okay. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll fix that, Cam. Mm. It makes you fall asleep. We'll, oh, my God, yeah. Really? I'm like, oh, like my cat. Cam's sweating profusely right now. I'm so hot. Thank God we're not doing video. Oh, God. N- nobody would ever come back and watch again. No, they would because they... Because people like seeing people, like, tortured. And you're, like, OnlyFans, you put, like, yourself sweating. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, people will, buy, will, will pay, pay for that. Pay for my sweaty These T-shirt. These broads will, like, uh, film themselves sleeping. And people, they'll make 14000 Would you let your night. wife post pictures of no, her feet? I don't do that. For for $10,000 a month? I don't show my wife. I'm asking you. I don't. I, show her feet $10,000 a month. Fuck yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait a minute. I thought you meant like well, her Well, I ass. got a business. No, 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 no. Oh, her feet? Yeah, fucking A-right. Or her lips? Yeah. Her vagina? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know? Not but, the vagina. No, I, I can't. I don't want I don't want my wife. I don't want 50-year-olds beating her dick off to my wife. I don't want that. What about her I know a toes? Lot. Listen, her toes I are see okay. cats. I see cats. My, my wife saw. She's an influencer. No, no, she's not. <laughs> she showed her ass off. Every video you post... It's right at her ass mm-hmm. off the bat. And then mm-hmm. you're like, I am doing things. No, the video shows her yeah. ass first. Yes. You're showing off your wife's ass mm-hmm. and you're making money that way. So just say what it is. Hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. And then, then you can be an influencer yeah. once you get, you know, a no, couple consultations. No, no she's showing her ass. Yeah, well. She's showing her ass. She's not saying anything. Mm-hmm. She showed her ass. Firstform.com slash Cam and Strick. That is the link and the only link you need to know Damn right. when it comes to first form. I think you just text me right now. What's going on? We're going out to dinner next week. Yeah, no, baby. Saturday. First form Nick. Hey, follow all y'all out there. First form Nick. Follow our buddy. First form Nick. Nick Clements. Yeah. Clements. Clem. Clements. Clements. Yeah. We say it right. Don't be like uh, Nick when you go to dinner and everything. Just you know. Just oh, Nick will eat, dude. Just Nick, dress casual. Nick. Nick's so cool because he works his ass off and he's so good for that company. And but he'll drink. And eat mm-hmm. hardcore. No food. tight t shirts or it's anything. It's not like, like that. you, Andy, where he's yeah. like, I get a wet step. No, he was gonna work his ass off the next day. Yeah, he, he will. If he like the other time yes. we, we the yes. other day we, we ate so much food and he's like, I'm just gonna work my ass yes. off the next day. Yeah. So he's not like, I gotta count my calories. No, some people have to do that. Mm-hmm. But like if you look at that guy, man, like he just he'll eat, he'll have fun. So he's not torturing himself. Right. But he works and he'll work his ass off to get to to, to get back in shape. Firstform.com slash cam and strick. Yeah, right. Get the apparel, get the shirts, the shorts, the hoodies. Are, you know, you'll be wearing those hoodies before you even know it. Fruits and greens. Get the metal shakers, man. The, the cups, everything. It, Nick's been using that metal, uh, that, that weighted vest when he like walks around and I stuff. Saw, like no, he was hiking with his lovely yeah, wife. I may have to get one of those. Dude, I have one. Let's walk get around one, with Yes, yeah. and do lunges. You have one? Yes. Yeah, man. Their I duffel have, bags are amazing, too. I use those when I went yeah, out of town. Everything. Yeah, they, everything is amazing. Everything, everything about First Form yes. is amazing. And if you don't believe me, look it up. Look up all their stuff. Yes. And tell me another fucking company. Tell me that one. Does, tell me one more. Just find does. me one. I dare you. I dare you. You can't. They are you the can't. real deal. And they're St. Louis. Baby. Real deal. And I know the owners, and they're the coolest yes, motherfuckers yeah, yeah. in the world. Illinois Recovery Center. 
The new premier inpatient substance abuse facility yeah. in Illinois, just outside of St. Louis, but do not be confused by that. You can come from anywhere. Anywhere, dude. Minnesota, Canada. They invite people anytime, anytime, anywhere. Welcome to the team, Illinois Recovery there won't Center. Be a empty bed. And all of place. you out there who need some help, you don't know where to turn. Now you have someone you can they turn are. to. I'm telling you, man. I was there the other day. The people were just so happy. The place mm-hmm. is beautiful. They've got books and movies. Be- and you, it's happy. Happy. It's happy. I walk in, I'm like, I look at the bed, I'm like, God, I wish I, when I went through my shit, like I was sleeping on concrete. Mm-hmm. This is beautiful stuff. And you can look out the windows. They have huge windows. Everything's bright. I noticed oh, that. the sun gets in. Yes, hey, the sun's do in you there. You know that sunlight's helps. very important for your mental state. Of course state. it is. Andy. Yes, did you know I'm, that? God, Andy talks to me like I'm a fucking two-year-old. Yes, I know that. Okay. When I walked in, the first thing I said to the, everybody when they're showing me the tour, I go, wow. The natural light. The natural light in here is mm-hmm. unbelievable. Mm. I love keeping my windows open. You ever go to a buddy's house? And they shut everything down. Now, when it's 100 degrees outside, you got to shut the house yeah, down. Sometimes I got to do that because my allergies. God, you're such a ch- like a child. But if you go to somebody's house and they, everything's like shut oh, down. Oh, the blinds? No, the blinds. It's depressing. Dude, I got lots of Me windows too. coming in. Now, it's 100 degrees. You got to shut things down. Whatever. Like, you know, you gotta, yeah. I don't want my house to be 100 no, degrees. It's going to cost you out the ass. But you go to, I'm like, I walk into somebody's house. I'm like, Jesus. You know what else? You know what reminds me of? Mm. Fucking my drug riddled days. Where you when don't want to see, yes, you don't want to see sun, and you lock down the house, and you're like curled up in like a ball. Like, you know what ah, else is good for your? I hate that. for your mental state. I hate that. So Besides much. Illinois Recovery Center, you know what else what? is good for you? What house plants? Yeah, because it's real life. They're like alive. It's like real life energy, Cam. They 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 put off real life hey, Brody, energy. Like what what the fuck is he talking? I'm about? telling you, dude. Yeah, house plants. Get house plants. That's, uh, that, that helps. You don't, have, you don't have house plants? Yeah, God, yes, we do. You better have plants all over that hey, house, dude. Yeah, we I do. will say Cam's house, he had a lot of candles going, a lot of candles, and it smelled did pretty good. Did you like great. my house? Yeah, I loved it. I liked it. Okay. And he never throws compliments out, so it's like, no, when he I does, did. it's like, it's kind I of I went meaningful. into your room, and Kate was under the covers in the bed, and I was talking to her and stuff like that. Oh, really? I didn't yes. know that. <laughs> you were in there, too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, watching. Dude, she's a cozy. And then the you cozy is just cozy. It's a big cozy house. The dogs were in the cage, so I don't know what's going on with that. No, we didn't want them jumping on you. We'll get into that again. Um, so listen, and I mean this when it comes to the the disease of addiction, like getting help should not be difficult and it's not with the Illinois recovery center, man. We could not be happier to have Eric and and Chrissy on board with us. Love those guys. Give them a call today. You can always check out their website as well, but 888-472-9559, 888-472-9559 info at Illinois recovery center.com. That is the, uh, email. Reach out to us. If you want to talk directly with Chrissy or Eric, man, we'll get you in touch with them. Um, and we'll have more information coming up on our social media about the Illinois Recovery Center. So check that out and check it out today. And welcome aboard Illinois Recovery Center. Now you have a place to turn to. Goddamn right. The real deal. Bellman and Bellman.com. B-E-H-L-M-A-N-N.com, Cam. Uh, they got the Buick GMC on one side of the street. On the other side... Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, so you can't miss that. Um, get yourself some new wheels, man. Everybody gets qualified. Danny is the best. Kenny's the best. Dale. Dale's the best. You, know, you can have more than one best. In this case, we've got three of them. Damn right, baby. At Bellman, you get no what? Swing and dicks. None. Where are they located? Troy, Missouri. Up there in Troy. Up there in Troy. Um, Tessonroofing.com. Call Brett Tesson today. Big old Brett. 314-932-1042. Storms were crazy. If you suffered hail damage, roof damage, or you just want to rejuvenate your roof, you call them and call them today. 314-932-1042. Tessonroofing.com. Brett Tesson. Flat out getting it done. And we love the support. Big we old get boy. He's a, he looks roofing. like a hockey player. He does. He's a shit kicker, dude. Yeah. But the nicest guy in the world. Mm-hmm. Fun. Oh, dude. you talked to him there? Yeah. Good. Hang out with him the whole night. Okay, good. At the uh, at the thing before the draft, I was sitting at their table the whole time. Oh, the night and before. And I got drafted. And... I was waiting okay. for them to draft me. Yeah, good. My fucking because I'm a, I suck at golf, but mm-hmm. I yeah. know how to yeah. entertain people. I don't know if so they like there's a lot of bids. You part of their force. there's a lot of people that want me a part of their group, man. Mm. It's Were quite they? Nice. I suck at golf, and I still was second overall. Funny how that works. Get Why out of is town. that, Andy? Is that because? What? I don't know what, what do you the, think that is. It was a weak draft class. Huh? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Bernie Federico was like six overall. Okay. 
And he's a good golfer he's too. Damn, and he's a Hall of Famer. I know. Why? I know people are dumb. Man. I don't, Why I don't are know they dumb? Is well, it dumb? Kind of. Is that what that is? Maybe. <laughs> I don't want to chirp anybody. Camastrick.com. Well, that's the well. I'm just saying. You know, like Bernie's a second legend, overall, you know? baby. Bernie's a legend. Why is that? I don't know. Hmm. Mm. It's just a, one of the world's mysteries. Camastrick.com. That's our website. Uh, follow us on all social media channels: Instagram, all of it. Facebook, Twitter at Camastrick. I'm Camastrick. locked out of Facebook. My Facebook is locked out. You can't get in? Cannot get in. Brody can't get in for Brody you Brody can't get me in. Oh, my God. Look at it, Brody. Look what it fucking does. Now it... Well, you better figure it out, Cam. I cannot get into Because you Facebook. have social media responsibilities. Look at that, Brody. Look at that mug. It does that, and then it pops up something else. I, I am on Cam about, about his social media responsibilities. I've been doing you've good. Been doing great. Doing good. Yep. You've, you've made that... I know. You have adjusted. I don't like, you know... I don't like to post stuff like I, no. I like to make it meaningful. Just shoot stuff all day long I, and then decide I, what you want I, to post. I, like exactly. Later that night, be like, oh, this is a good. I know. I got, I got a bunch Just of stuff. Just start posting. I do. Shit. Shooting shit. I do. Yeah. I do. Shooting. All right. Shooting, uh, drinking, uh, smoking. Thank you, thank you, Johnny Gibson. Thanks, Johnny boy. And everybody affiliated with uh, the Camera Podcast, man. Happy 4th of July to all you Americans. Be I very love you guys. careful out there. American through and through, baby. And happy Canada Day. American through and through, baby. Happy Canada Day. And happy Canada Day. Canadian through and through, baby. Let's yes. go. Yes. Love your country. Let's go. Love your country. Love it, baby. Let's go. Look what we're all doing, man. Let's look at what we're, we're doing. We're the American dream. We're dude. the American dream. Everyone Fucking knows that. grew up that. in the middle of nowhere. And look what we're doing, Look dude. at us. We're living in huge houses on fucking shit. Are you kidding? <laughs> this is an American dream. What do you mean? I know. It's great. No, it is. I have it's a ninth great. grade education. Look at what we're doing. Are you kidding? It's an American dream, dude. American dream, baby. God damn Only right. in America. Only. And next time I'll tell you about when I had fried chicken with uh, Don King back in the day. Yes. Like, Andy's, oh, only in America. Andy's stories. Like, only I, in America. I just can't. I can't. All right. Hey, listen, happy 4th of July. Love all you guys. I love all y'all.